Welcome you to Bronco Stadium. We expect a sellout crowd crowd here in Boise as the visitors from Hawaii make a house call on the Boise State Broncos. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with the coach, Dick Tomey. And coach, everybody's saying this is going to be an up-and-down game, a shootout. Last team with the ball wins the game. You don't necessarily think so. Well, Barry, I think these are two outstanding teams. But last year, Boise's defense held Hawaii to 21 points and shut them out in the last quarter. I think the defenses will have something to say about that. Boise State, of course, went into this year with one of America's best quarterbacks, Ryan Dinwiddie. He goes down in the second game of the season. And guess what? This team hasn't missed a beat at quarterback. Well, B.J. Rohde has come in and done a terrific terrific job. He doesn't run as well as did what he did, but he has thrown the ball very, very well, and that gives them a chance to beat anybody. Dan Hawkins, of course, the Boise State coach, was talking about Hawaii saying, defensively, this team is a lot better than the one he saw last year. Well, I think they are, but they're untested, really, to me, Barry. I think their pass defense has impressive stats. You see them playing against BYU here, but they haven't played good passing teams the last two weeks, have loaded up on the run and stopped the run very well. So you feel these numbers may be a little bit misleading? Well, I think these numbers are really going to be challenged. If they've got these same numbers after tonight, then I think their defense really makes a statement. All right, when we come back, we're going to take a look at the Hawaii offense. How do you stop them? They spread it out. June Jones, the master of the run and shoot. We'll come back. Talk about that on the other side of this. A look at June Jones. He is uh, taking the run and shoot offense of Mouse Davis, for whom he played at Portland State, and he has made it his own, and he has truly perfected it. Very tough offense to defense against. And here's a guy, a defensive coach, Dan Hawkins, in his second year here at Boise State. You see his record, 11 up and 5 down. He began at Willamette College, and we are underway. This is going to be Brewster, the deep man. He won't have a chance, and Hawaii will start at the 20-yard line. Well, Dick, we talked about how tough it is for this Hawaii offense to be defensed, and we're going to find out right now. Well, Barry, part of it is simulating the offense with your scout team during the course of the week, and I think that's been a big job for Dan Hawkins, but they do face other teams that are similar, although not identical. First snap of the day. They go out of the shotgun as they do on virtually every snap. Timmy Chang, the sophomore. Getting more and more game tough. This is a guy that had a wrist injury, didn't play in the spring. First snap, first pass. Throws underneath. This one is caught by Owens, and Owens will have a first down across the 30 to about the 34-yard line. Here's a look at Timmy Chang, 6'2", 191 pounds. As we said, just a sophomore, 52% career completion percentage. 30 touchdowns. I'm sure he'd like to change that last number a little bit, 32 picks. First down at the 34. Again out of the shotgun. Trips right. Now they bring Owens in motion. Now he goes back the other way. Chang again. Rolls right. Throws underneath. This one is caught by Iloa. And Iloa takes it to the 41-yard line. Take a look at how Hawaii lines up offensively. Colbert, Owens, Iloa, and Neil Gossett are the wide receivers and the running back. Manuai is absolutely sensational on the offensive line. This is a guy everybody expects will be a first or second round draft choice. He's got plenty of help from his friends. This is an excellent offensive line. Second down and four. Third snap, third pass over the middle. Caught this time, caught in traffic. A tough catch made by Owens. His second catch, and that'll be another Hawaii first down. Defensively for Boise State, Bobby Hammer brings the hammer. From Carmichael, California, the right tackle. Both tackles very active. Julius Roberts and Ryan Nelson quick off the edge. Ako, the middle linebacker from Rohnert Park, California. Again, active. Andy Avalos, undersized, but gets to the ball quickly. Quentin Michael anchoring a very effective secondary for Boise State. So far, though, Timmy Chang, perfect. First down at the 47. Play fake. Chang going to go up. Quick screen for Owens. Owens slips the first tackle. Midfield, 45 to the 41-yard line, and another first down. And right now, they're rolling. 
They are, they are, Barry, and one thing that's very unusual about the University of Hawaii is that they do not substitute their wide receivers as much as most teams in the country because their receivers have to read so much after the snap of the ball. The wide receivers stay in the game as long as they can. Yeah, it really is. It's a read offense 70% of the time, and the onus is not so much on the quarterback as it is on the wide receiver. The offensive line and the wide receivers. The offensive linemen get the protection. The quarterback does not call protection. Chang merely perfect so far. Straight back he goes again. He haven't run the ball yet. Throws. Caught again by Owens. And Owens steps out of a tackle, gets out of bounds. At about the 33, he'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. They're really clicking right now. Well, Boise State's going to have to find a way to uh, stop Chad Owens. He caught a pot full of passes last week, and he's the guy that Timmy Chang would like to go to the most. Uh, this down and distance right here, Barry, is a great opportunity for Hawaii to, to go downtown with the ball and come back and pick it up on, on, uh, on third down. Yeah, it's like a free play for them. It's they a come free play. play. Trips right this time. Mitchell alone setback. Long count this time by Chang. Here comes the blitz. Chang, they pick it up. Chang throws wide open. Did he get the foot down? Yes, he did. He Justin did. Colbert. Nice grab and a good job to get the foot down. We'll take a look at this right here. You're going to see Justin Colbert getting his foot down. And Julius Brown on the coverage a little too far off for this position on the field. As the ball gets down the field, the corners need to squeeze tighter. And, of course, I don't have to remind that no adjustment of your set is necessary. Yes, it's a blue field. First down at the 24-yard line. The first running play right up the middle. Mitchell, and he gets about four to the 18-yard line. Dane Oldham, defensive tackle for Boise State, makes the stop. Hawaii will use very few uh, variations in formationing tonight as Brewster goes in the game replacing Mitchell. They're in trips or doubles most of the time. First six passes, six plays were passes. That was the first running play. And Chang, six of six, 57 yards. Trips right on second down at six. Blitz comes, picked up nicely over the middle and incomplete intended for Iloa. Quentin Michael was coming hard, and Michael Brewster, I thought, a great job to pick him up. Michael picked him up, and now Ron Collins, the defensive coordinator at Boise, deciding that as they penetrate their 20-yard line, he wants to come with more pressure and does that, uh, gets, and does force Timmy Chang to throw the ball badly. Boise State now comes with a nickel package. They'll be a nickel and dime quite a lot during the day. Double slot this time on third down at six. Blitz comes again up the middle. Again, it's picked up. Chang steps up, throws, and had a rush to rushes throw just a bit incomplete for Colbert. Chris Carr covering. Yeah, Chris Carr's a nickel back, and they really like him a lot, Barry. They, they think Chris Carr, who's a sophomore from Reno, Nevada, they believe that he is as good as any of their starting defensive backs. Let's take a look at this. You see Chris Carr on the coverage. The ball's thrown low, but the ball's thrown away from the defense. Low, so only the receiver can get it. That's a nice drive by the University of Hawaii. There's a look at June Jones. As you said earlier, when you were off camera, the only coach in America wearing a Titleist hat. Field goal try on its way. 35-yarder up and plenty good. Just an eye at on the 35-yard field goal, and Hawaii has gone on top by a 3 to nothing count. 12.07 remaining first quarter. Hawaii draws first blood. Boise State will have it when we come back. Back Hawaii with a 35-yard field goal by Ayat has uh, drawn first blood. 11 plays, 61 yards on the drive. Deep to receive this kick. Brock Forsey and David Michael for Boise State. This will be a fairly short kick. That's going to be Michael at the 12-yard line. To the 20, little gap gets to the 28-yard line. Now it's time for the Conagra Foods Flavor of Tailgating Report, brought to you by Conagra Foods. We set America's table. Today's top tailgaters coming from Meridian, Idaho. Al Panas and his friends, they've been tailgating here at Boise State for the past 10 years. And Jiffy Pop 
popcorn is their favorite. Look at that. Oh, there my it is. goodness. Who said I burned the popcorn? That's perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. You don't see too many lays like that in Hawaii either, do you, Dick? No, you don't. Those Very sponge rubber ones. Boys, you're right on the football. What are those babies? They weigh about 150 pounds. Gain of five on that little swing. B.J. Rohde, as we said earlier, came on for Ryan Dinwiddie when Dinwiddie went down in the second game of the season. Uh, this is a fifth-year senior, very poised. We talked to the coaching staff yesterday about whether or not they uh, have gone a little bit more vanilla with this offense. They said absolutely not. They, they, they run the same offense. They talk about how Rohde has, for years, really studied for this opportunity and has really taken advantage of it. It's a very balanced Boise State offense. Just about 50% run, 50% pass. Rody gives this time to Forsey, gets a little gap. He'll have a first down across the 40-yard line. Take a look at uh, Boise State's lineup. Forsey, who just made that gain. Strohaus lines up at fullback and will line up at tight end as well with Atkinson, the other tight end, Billy Wingfield, and Jay Swilly, who also will move over and play tight end. Darren College from North Pole, Alaska. We'll tell you his story. He's the anchor of the offensive line. First down, Boise State right at the 40-yard line. Wingfield in motion. Straight ahead this time to Forsey again. Gets by the first man and picks up six. Good first down yardage. Defensively for Hawaii. And this is a very improved unit, as you see. Houston Ala, the uh, right defensive end, but this is a very strong team. Sapuanga, you're going to like this guy. Still learning the game. Chris Brown, first team all-conference last year, the middle backer, and plenty of help on either side. In the secondary, they got Kenny Patton, just a freshman, out there on an island. Milhouse, the other corner, very effective, good cover guy. They like to play man, so Patton's going to be a key player. Quick toss this time to Swilly. Swilly will have the first down in to Hawaii territory at the 44-yard line. Tinoi Samoa on the stop. If you're Dan Hawkins, Barry, you have to like what you see so far because the two runs that Boise's run right at the guts of the Hawaii defense, they've been able to block the interior, which is something none of the last two teams Hawaii has played has been able to do. So that bodes well for Boise's offense, which, as you say, is a balanced offense. Well, you said earlier that you feel this Boise team is tougher than the BYU team that Hawaii lost to. I, I, I really believe that. Slot left this time. Rody going to go up. Throws downfield for Swilly, and Swilly can't catch up to it at about the 26-yard line. Kenny Patton, the freshman, being tested and held up to it. Now, what you see there, Barry, is, is that one of the reasons Boise, they run the Oregon attack, the thing that Oregon's done that I think puts them ahead of many of the people uh, on the West Coast is they run turn-back protection, they run drop-back protection, they run move-out protection. That time, Boise turned back the offensive line, which is more difficult to rush than a straight drop-back pass. Second down now and 10 at the 44-yard line of the Warriors. Out of the shotgun. Rody to pass again. Throws. Incomplete. Floated that up there for Gilligan and right there in his back was Bonafat. That's their nickel coverage. Bonafat in on the nickel coverage. Broke on the ball really well. So it'll be third and ten. Gilligan leaves for Boise State. Fanucci comes back on. You see what Hawaii's what Hawaii's philosophy is here in third and long. They show blitz. They come with a blitz up the middle. And Rody steps up, picked up nicely, and the pass is caught by Winfield. First down at the 27-yard line. Nice job to pick up the blitzing linebacker, Chris Brown. Excellent job by Boise State. It was a zone blitz. And as you see, Rody does a nice job of finding the open receiver. Terrific job. And Billy Wingfield picks up the first down. Great That's job. a nice look at that. Wingfield ran a nice route from Carson, California. Billy Wingfield. Fiducci in the slot this time inside of Wingfield on first down. Both teams moving the ball offensively. Give to Forsey. Tries to bounce it outside and gets ahead to about the 25. Tino Samoa on the stop. 
Brock Forsey will become the leading rusher in the history of Boise State football, Barry, sometime in the next couple of weeks. He's just a, a little over 100, 177 yards away from Cedric Minter. Rusty Colburn is the injured Boise State player on the field here. Rusty, Rusty is a been a good player for Boise State. His backup is Jason Turner. And this is the kind of thing where the coach has his, has his uh, fingers crossed that Rusty can get up and continue. Leg injury of some sort working on the right leg. Well, I think so far, Barry, what we see is both teams have moved the ball. Boise State has to feel great about about being able to stop Hawaii with a field goal, and Hawaii would like to be able to stop them here with just a shot at a field goal or get a turnover. So far, Dick, it's the shootout that uh, people have been talking about. Well, it, both teams have been able to move the ball. Hawaii did not score a touchdown. You pay off in touchdowns in this game. When you get it down there, you've got to get it in the end zone more than you have to kick field goals. They continue to work on uh, Rusty Colburn, the sophomore from La Crescentia, California. Boise has a number of players. Very impressed with the Boise program. Uh, this program is the 12th winningest Division I program in college football uh, all time, which is very interesting to most people. They haven't been Division I for, for long, but of the schools that have been, they are 12th. They are just ahead of the University of Washington. They've won 66% of their games, which to many would be surprising, but they've just had a great program here for a long time. All right, while they work on uh, Rusty Colburn, we'll jump off the track. Nine minutes, 33 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Hawaii leads 3 to nothing. Boise driving. We'll be back. Welcome back. They continue to work on Rusty Colburn. It is an injury to the right leg. They do have the card out, and uh, they will uh, take Rusty Colburn off. And, of course, they will take uh, every bit of precaution that... Uh, you would expect uh, that is something that you see in college football all the time. We do not know the extent of the injury yet, but we will uh, tell you about it as we find out about it. Hey, just a reminder to be a part of college football's newest bowl game, the Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. It takes place on Christmas night. And what a great reward to a team and its fans. The Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl, right in your backyard, Dick. Well, it is, uh, Barry, and I think that it's it's wonderful to have your Christmas dinner if you're in New York City or Chicago or Los Angeles, and turn on the television set and see beautiful television set and see beautiful Hawaii, and it's something the fans in Hawaii I think will support very very well. I'll be there. I might just come knock on your door. <laughs> you're invited. <laughs> Well, injuries, Barry, are something we all hate about college football, but it's a fact of the game. The game is a very physical game, and certainly uh, we wish Rusty very well. We're on the WAC conference today. Fresno State, of course, played last night against Colorado State. Had to withstand a Colorado State rush at the end. San Jose wins today over SMU despite being down 17-7 at one point in that game. Rice uh, leading La Tech 7-0. Came close to Fresno last week, as a matter of fact. UTEP and New Mexico State are scoreless in the first period. Kenny Hatfield, one of the winningest coaches in, in college football, does a great job at Rice. Not a lot of people still running at, but the ones that do run it really effectively. They do. Rice, Air Force, and Wake Forest. And what a win for them today over Georgia Tech. Second down and seven as we resume play. Here's a give this time to Forsey coming off the wing and Forsey uh, play fake and a throw and wide open is Hack for the touchdown. Fool me, fool the world. That's a great job, a great job of getting that play call by Boise State's offensive staff. Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator of Boise State. That's off what, what is called the Z quick, Z quick throwback. And uh, tremendous job. Acri was the guy that actually threw the pass. And Heck, who would come into the game, who's the third string running back, was the man who caught it. They brought Forsey off the wing. I honestly thought Forsey had the ball. Instead, they gave it up to Acri coming around. And Acri was the guy that threw the pass. And all sorts of confusion on his point after here. Well, Boise got all excited and didn't have enough players on the field. They tried to rush Scott Huff onto the field, but... He was uh, about four yards from the line of scrimmage. 
Scott Huff, a senior captain from Horizon High School in Phoenix. And this will be a substitution infraction. Damn Prior to the ball being snapped, offense had 12 men on the field. Five-yard penalty, replay the try. Okay. Incidentally, I do want to uh, make a correction in T.J. Acri, not Acri. I want to make sure that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Acri I know that I pronounced the name of their son correctly. Try for point again is on its way, and it is good again. So the penalty meaning nothing. It is a 7-3 to three lead. Boise State now take another look at this. It was Rohde faking to Forsey, getting it to Acri, and the pass to Donnie Heck. You'll see T.J. Acri start wide, put his, plant his cleats, and throw the ball back. Tremendous job to Heck of getting him open, and the Hawaii defense got lost in all that. So did I. <laughs> and so did we. Absolutely. We both did. Nice throw by Acri. I'll tell you, a lot of times you can get somebody that open, but either Acri can't get it to him or the receiver, Heck, drops the football, and they executed that perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. So it was Rohde to Forsey to Acre to Heck. Nine plays, 71 yards. Took them two minutes and 50 seconds, and it took a lot of razzle-dazzle. Brewster going to be the deep man for Hawaii. Tyler Jones, the kicker, comes forward, drives this one pretty good. And there'll be no return. Uh, let's see if Boise has made some defensive adjustments to try to slow Hawaii down. Timmy Chang, very hot in that first series. So both teams able to move the ball. Hawaii had to settle for three. And Boise State with a touchdown pass off a double reverse. So Timmy Chang, and the Warriors will try to get it back here. Double slot on first down. Chang steps up, throws too tall. Intended for Gossett. That Jordan. time, Boise State, Barry, jumped into a three-man line. They were in a four-man line most of the... They, they jumped into a three-man line and brought the linebacker, Berger, off the strong side. And first time, the first series, they were in a four-man front most of the time. They might feel they'll get better coverage by, by working in the three-man line. Well, after completing his first six passes, Timmy Chang has now missed his last three. Incidentally, Boise State has been in, in a nickel defense from the opening snap. Showing blitz. They come with a blitz, and here's a draw play, and that's going nowhere. Thurl Mitchell is stopped right now by Quentin Michael and Andy Avalos. Three-man line again, the odd defense. When they're in the odd defense, they'll mix it up as they did that time, Barry, with the blitz out of the odd defense to fill those gaps up front. Now, one of the things that June Jones told us yesterday in our conversation was it usually takes us a quarter to find out what their defensive game plan is. And for that reason, the second quarter has been Hawaii's most successful quarter. Yes, and th their offense is much like the wishbone. It's a package offense, and the coaches have to have time to see what the Boise adjustment is. Third down now and eight. They come off the edge. Chang steps up, floats it out here, batted away beautifully by Quentin Michael. What a play. Nice play by Quentin Michael. Quentin Michael and David Michael are not related, and that's amazing because the spelling of their name is very unusual, but tremendous players. Let's take a look at this. Quentin Michael high in the air. Ilawa tries to make the catch. Great play by the Boise defense, and Hawaii's back to punt. Now this punter is the real deal. He is something else. Matt McBrien, and this guy has got a ton of leg. Gilligan, the deep man, and it's blocked! And this is going to be a Boise touchdown if they can get on it, and they do! Chris Carr came on to block it! 
good putter or no, you got to get it off before you can worry about how far it goes. That was a leak in Hawaii's punt protection. Let's take a look at it. McBriar trying to punt the football. The ball is taken right off his foot. Nice job. It's taken off his foot by Chris Carr. He makes the block, and he makes the recovery, which is very unusual. What a play by Chris Carr. Try for point now is on its way. It is in the air. It is good. 8.02 remaining to be played. First quarter, 14-2 for three, rather, Boise State out ahead of Hawaii. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN+. Plus. It's their fourth one this year, Barry, and a block kick is such an emotional lift for a football team. There's no bigger play in football than a block kick. So Jones will kick it off again. He'll be kicking to Michael Brewster. Put two deep in the end zone, and this one's going to be about eight yards deep also. No return. So he's doing his job. Let's take a look at some scores from around the country today. Oklahoma State had a chance to tie that game with a two-point conversion. In fact, it was controversial. 17-15, to 15, Texas just gets by him. Georgia had to come from behind to beat Alabama. Wins by two. Mississippi playing in Oxford. Defeats number eight, Florida. Battle of the quarterbacks. Notre Dame trailed Stanford early. Came back with 28 second half points to win it easily. Hawaii starts at the 20 yard line again. Chang out of the shotgun. Has to step up. And now he's in trouble. And he fumbles the ball. It's picked up this time by Avalos, and Avalos will get it back to the seven-yard line, and everything is going the way of the hometown Broncos. Quentin Michael was the guy who made that play. Quentin Michael and the three-man line has really helped Boise State. Nice adjustment by Ron Collins. Timmy Chang with the football. You must secure the football when you're running around back there with it. So Hawaii opens with a long drive that results in a 35-yard field goal. Since then, it has been all Boise State. have to secure the football we when talk- there's blue shirts running around Barry you have to secure that ball and I think the biggest adjustment credit to Ron Collins and the Boise defense is the three-man line uh, at this point in the last two series we talked about Avalos too he's just a guy always around the ball there's a give to force he bounces it outside and takes it down about the two-yard line David Gilmore with the saving tackle Hawaii just needs to right the ship here, keep their poise, take a deep breath, and make a goal line stand right here. So it'll be second down and goal at just outside the two-yard line. Offset eye, Swenson the fullback, Forsey the tailback. Forsey again, straight ahead, dives, he's in! Touchdown, Broncos! Very impressive, very impressive quarter of football by the Boise State Broncos. Offense, defense, and special teams. And the Hawaii Warriors right now are probably a little shell-shocked, Barry, and they just need to understand that they can work their back way back into this football game, but there are no such thing as 17-point plays. They just need to take it one play at a time. Yeah, Boise making all the big plays right now. Try for point is up and good, and it's a 21 to three. Boise State lead, and still plenty of time left in the first quarter. Here's what started it. Let's look at this, Timmy Chang to the outside. He's pressured, he keeps up inside. Quentin Michael strips the ball from Chang. Avalos picks the ball up and gets the ball down inside for the big play, and here's the touchdown to Forsey over the top. And the thing that needs to concern you if you're a Hawaii Warrior fan is the interior defense is getting blocked at this point in time. Rob Vion made the big play, and Jason Turner, 21 points for the Boise State Broncos in two minutes and four seconds. That's got to Holy make it, cow. That's got to make you gnash your teeth as a coach, doesn't it? It does, but I'll tell you one thing about June Jones. 
He will stay the course, and he will not lose his poise. And I believe after watching his team for a long time, I think they'll, they'll continue to play hard, continue to believe that they can win. Well, one thing about the run-and-shoot offense, you're never out of a game. Right now, though, it's all Boise State. Jones to kick it off again. Brewster the deep man. Brewster's not going to have a chance again. And that's time they're going to say it goes out of bounds before it reached the end zone, which means it'll come out to the 35-yard line for Hawaii. Yeah, Jones doesn't like that kickoff. He just gave the, gave the Hawaii Warriors 15 yards, which you don't need to do. Touchdown by Forsey, incidentally, his 41st career touchdown here at Boise. Forsey's a terrific player. He, he's receiving yards. His all-purpose yards are off the chart. He's a good receiver, a good running back, and uh, is going to be the, the leading rusher in Boise history, as we said. John West in the ballgame now for Hawaii at the running back spot. Mike Bass did not make the trip, so it's going to be Mitchell and West for the most part tonight. Straight back again. Chang throws a little swing out of the backfield for West, and he stopped for a loss on another big-time defensive play by Chauncey Ako. Chauncey Ako from Santa Rosa City College. Nice pursuit. Chauncey Ako, this is a big game for him. He has relatives in Hawaii, but this is a tremendous tackle inside out on John West. John West from Yuba City, City, Ju Yuba City College. So it'll be second down, a long 10, call it 11. This time Chang goes under center for the first time. Gives to West. West tries to bounce it outside, gets around the first man, but great pursuit by Boise State. Limits it to about a four-yard gain. I mean, they came up to the ball in a hurry. Elsewhere around the country, here's a halftime score, 42 to nothing. That point, there was a 46-point spread on that game. Miami likely will equal that in the third quarter. Oklahoma having all it wants in Columbia, Missouri from the Missouri Tigers, but lead by three. One of the great upsets up in the Pacific Northwest. 20 years it took California to beat Washington in Seattle. And Penn State, a winner over previously undefeated Wisconsin. In Madison, Barry. That's in Madison. Chang on a shovel pass this time to Mitchell, and Mitchell will have the first down close to midfield. That shovel pass is an integral part of Hawaii's offensive attack. It's just a screen pass where the quarterback, in, here's a quarterback, invites the defender toward him. You'll see Chang invite the defender and then lay the ball off to Thero Mitchell, and he's a powerful runner. And Altieri makes a tackle. So a first down, Hawaii at the 49-yard line. Trips left this time. Brewster is now the setback. Chang, the shovel pass to Brewster. Brewster, midfield, 45 to the 40. Tries to get to the outside at the 30, at the 25, and down to the 21-yard line. If something's successful, you might as well do it again, Barry, huh? He's got some scoot, too. He does. Brewster's a transfer from the University of Tennessee. Came to Hawaii last year, redshirted last year. Happens very quickly. Watch Brewster break it back against the grain. Nice job of securing the football. 29 yards on that. Key block from Louis Fuata. Ball just short of the 22-yard line. This is how quickly Hawaii can get back into things. Play fake this time. Chang looking for the screen. Owens makes the catch but has no chance, and he's dropped for a loss of about eight. Chris Carr, who has already made a big play on the block punt and the recovery for a touchdown, makes another big play there. Well, this is a great job by Chris Carr because he really smells this thing out. Back to Chang. It's a throwback screen, and Carr is all over it. Boise, great pursuit to the ball. Well, they're, they're very well drilled. Boise is very well drilled. I thought they were as well coached a team as I saw all last year. Second and long out of the shotgun. Quick toss this time, and I think the ball just slipped out of Chang's hand. Well, that's the kind of thing, Barry, when you're in the shotgun, sometimes you get that ball, you get kind of a knuckle ball from the center, and you can't, you know, like it was a baseball, you don't get the seams right, and you're throwing it from the middle of the ball, and I think that's what happens this time. Timmy 
Chang tries to throw the ball. He doesn't have it. He did not have it. He gets the ball. You can see it spin out of his hand, and Hawaii's got, got themselves a big third down. Timmy Chang had a, a bad hand earlier in this year uh, in the game against BYU. Threw a lot of ducks. Now that hand is getting better. Third down and a bunch. Third and 16. Quick toss again. That's that jailbreak screen. And Neil Gossett will get it back to about the 15-yard line. It's going to be about three yards short of the first down. I look for Coach Jones to go for this on fourth down here because uh, they need a touchdown. And they will almost without hesitation. I wouldn't be surprised to see them come back, come back with a wide receiver screen. It's been a very popular weapon, both that jailbreak screen and the bubble screen in college football these days. Double slot, fourth down, and a long two. They come with a blitz. Chang throws, caught for a first down by Owens, and now they're going to say no catch. Owens arguing his point, saying, yes, I got it. But the guys who matter most, the officials say, no, you didn't. Well, this will be interesting to see this. The Broncos take over. First and ten. I think it's a catch, Dick. It looks like it was a catch, although the ball, the ball may have come out just as he goes to the ground. We'll take a look at this. You be the judge. And the question is, did he have possession before he hit the ground? Looked like he might not have had possession. In any case, the ball goes over to Boise State. You don't get a second chance in college football. A flag comes in on the tackle by Forsey. Sapawanga might have gotten a piece of the mask. Let's see. Oh, it looks not. like it's against Boise. It looks like it could be a hole. Isaac Sapawanga has made a tremendous difference in the Hawaii defense. He's from American Samoa, and he is a very, very physical player. Let's take another look. You've got to have control, and the ball bounced. Yeah, the ball bounced just as he hit the ground. Good call in by the officials. Things not going that man's way right at the moment. His team trails 21-3, to still three minutes and change to play in the first period. Boise State now backed up inside its own 10-yard line. Will be first at about 18. Give this one to Michael. Michael gets a little gap. Gets ahead to the 20 yard line, all the way to about the 23 yard line. So we got 16 of the 18 back on an inside run. Well, and I think what Hawaii has seen the last couple of weeks, they played teams that couldn't run the ball. They put nine in the box, and now they've got to be more balanced on defense, and they've got, they're creating some seams up front. And they're going to have to step in their run defense here tonight. Bronco, or rather, uh, Michael with the fastest Broncos time over 40 yards. He's been timed at 4-4-3 for the 40. Showed a little quick there. Second down now and three. Give to Forsey, and Forsey's going to have the first down. I'll tell you right now, that Bronco offensive line is getting off the ball and getting a pretty good push. They, they sure are. Scott Huff leads that offensive line, the center, number 56, from Horizon High School in Phoenix. And uh, they play with a lot of pride. They keep their pads down. I think they were forewarned about the Hawaii defensive front. And right now, Boise owns the front. Fanuki comes to the near side. It's a trips right set. Gilligan in the slot to the right side. Straight back Rody, short drop, throws, caught this time by Swilly. That'll be a gain of about six. Chris Brown on the stop, but right now the Broncos clicking. Well, passing, they're mixing pass and run. Swilly's a big youngster. Swilly is a is six foot three. He weighs 220 pounds. Played some tight end last week. Let's see him one on one, just running the quick route. He's a big target. Hiram Peters makes a tackle, but it's at six or seven yards. This time they sent Fanuki to the far side, Wingfield to the near side. Forsey and Michael both in the backfield. Now Wingfield in motion. Give this time to Forsey, and Forsey will get two or three. It'll be a little short of the first down. It's going to be third and very short. 
You see Wingfield in motion. They've got a whole series of plays off of that. That's a Z quick. That's a hand the ball to the tailback. And obviously their, their uh, touchdown came off of the reverse with that. Again, we see Coach Jones contemplating what Hawaii needs to do on offense as well as supporting the defense. His team trails 21-3, to three, third down, less than a yard for the Broncos, probably the last play of the quarter. Forsey has the first down, and Moore spins out of a tackle and just couldn't quite keep his feet. If he had, he might have been gone. Gain a 10 and a big first down. The thing that has been the strength for the University of Hawaii, the thing that's been the strength for the University of Hawaii, their run defense is what's hurting them right now. Look at Boise State come off the football. Hawaii needs to stay inside out and keep their head up and tackle, and they lost the inside out pursuit that time. So there will be one more play here in the quarter, at least I think so. They just get it off, play fake. Where are you going to go up? Aaron and out deep, got a man out there, Fanuki, but he overthrew it. Fanuki pretty well covered that time by Kenny Patton. The freshman is doing a very nice job so far. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny Patton has done a really fine job of replacing Ella Mimian. And uh, that was a nice shot by, by Boise State of going up top. We'll be back. To start the second quarter on the Hawaii sideline, that's Sean Withy Allen. He is the backup quarterback loosening up. Uh, we don't know if there's uh, anything wrong with Timmy Chang. We will uh, try to find out. We don't know if this is just a case of being active and keeping the arm loose or not. We'll find out. Give this time to Michael. Michael bounces it outside midfield to the 48-yard line of Hawaii. Tino Samoa on the stop. Barry, I think Withy Allen was expected to play. I think Coach Jones was going to play both quarterbacks. Withy Allen's done a nice job in the last couple of games. I think you're seeing the backs, uh, Michael and Forsey for Boise, really showing extreme quickness and instinct as they get into the secondary. This is a real test for Boise, too. As you said, the level goes up for Hawaii with uh, the caliber of competition Boise provides, and I think that could be said for the Broncos as well. Two really good college football teams. Fanuki in motion this time. Rody to throw. It's batted in the air and almost intercepted by Brown. Chris Brown would like to have that one back. That ball was batted, and Chris Brown had an opportunity to get the pick and uh, couldn't quite hang on to it. I think this is significant. I see Chad Owens going back to return kicks. He was second in the nation and made second team All-American last year as a freshman. And they have not used him much, but obviously Coach Jones feels the urgency here to get him in the ball game as a kick return and give him more kicks at the can. Mike Bass, remember, uh, did not make the trip. He is uh, injured, and so Owens will uh, step in. And it's certainly a capable replacement. We've got a timeout being called by Hawaii. I might say Chad Owens, uh, very last year in the BYU game where Hawaii scored 70 points, Chad Owens had a punt return for a touchdown, a kickoff return for a touchdown, and another kickoff return of about 60 yards. And so he's very, very, a very, very outstanding returner. Yeah, in fact, that was an NCAA record. He had 249 yards of kick returns. Yes, incredible. And he's one of three players from Roosevelt High School in, in uh, Honolulu that are all named Chad and all played together. <laughs> Kalili Moku and Kapanui. The three Chads from Hawaii, unlike the Chads from Florida. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> they know where all of these are. Keith Shuttler will be the punter. It's a twisting kick that Owens will handle at the 16-yard line. Owens trying to get that gap. Couldn't do it. Closed down quickly at the 24, and now a late flag comes in. So we'll see what this is all about. It was Julius Roberts who came quickly and really rocked Owens. And I think it's going to go against Hawaii, just judging by the fact that June Jones is out there pleading his case. Could be a personal foul against the Warriors. There's June. The officials will talk it over. I 
94. That's that's Abu Maafala. He's late. Abu Maafala. He's a true freshman from Honolulu. He looked like he was late right there. Let's wait and see. Well, gonna get it the other way, I think. On the, back, on the return, half the distance, first down Hawaii from the 10 yard line. <laughs> so Maafala might have been guilty, but not in the eyes of the officials. It's going against Hawaii. It'll go back. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN Plus. Second period, Boise State leading Hawaii 21 to 3. The Warriors will start at their own 10 yard line following the penalty for a block in the back on the punt return. Timmy Chang remains in the ball game, incidentally, even though Sean Withy Allen was warming up. John West, the lone setback. They give it to West, and West trying to bounce outside at the 10, a little bit of room. Tries to get outside again. and gets it up to about the 16-yard line. A gain of six. Wes Nurse runs him out. Monowai leading the way. Boise State in, the, in their three-man line again. That has worked best for them in running situations. And if they want to plug those gaps in the middle, they just, they just zone blitz. Second down and four. Ball at the 17 yard line. Trips right. Chang give to West again. West with room. 20 25. Steps inside a block across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Nice gain by John West. Well, so far, this has been an outstanding game for the Warriors, but for two minutes and four seconds. And those two minutes and four seconds have been murder. It started with this the block punt. Carr falling on it in the end zone. Touchdown, Boise State. Then. Chang tries to roll away. Gets the ball swatted from behind by Michael. Picked up by Avalos. Down to the seven yard line. One play later. Over the top. Touchdown, Forsey. And that is what has Boise in front, 21 to 3. Here's Owens on the reception. A gain of seven. Now, Ju June Jones' response to the three man line was to run the ball a couple times in this series. Barry, because that's that's the the belief that three man line cannot handle a running game. And you look at the numbers, and the game they are so comparable. But the scoreboard, of course, which really is the only important statistic, shows an 18 point edge for Boise State. Owens now five catches, 46 yards for the Warriors, coming off a game in which he caught 13. The importance of the kicking game and the turnovers, Barry, in this game, as we can see so far. That's what you've always talked about. Might get a freebie here. And it's dropped. Well, the thing, the, the facts are, Barry, in football, the same things win in every stadium every week. You win the turnover battle, you win the kicking game, you win the fourth quarter, you win the critical situations, and you play smart, and you win. That wins every week, every place. Upside, defense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Tony Altieri was the guilty party. Evening starting to set in on Boise, Idaho. Just beautiful weekend here. Terrific weather. We expected it might be a little colder. Barry Tompkins, the coach, Dick Tomey, alongside. I played nine holes of golf, Barry, this morning with the athletic director, Gene Blameyer from Boise, an old friend. What a beautiful place this is. Really has been just terrific. People have been very welcoming. And the first chance for me to see the Smurf turf here. Chang throws, incomplete, intended for Gossett, hit him in the hands, Gossett couldn't hold on. Elsewhere around the country, Ohio State uh, in a battle with Northwestern, but leading at the half in Evanston, 14-9. Tennessee, seven-point leader over Arkansas, they're playing the second quarter. Washington State leading USC at halftime, that's probably the biggest game in the Pac-10 conference so far this, year, this week. LSU easy over Louisiana Lafayette there in the second quarter also. Second and ten now. Quick toss this time on that screen again. And this is going to be Colbert. And Colbert will have a first down inside the 45-yard line of Boise State. Boise State came with the blitz. Rod Collins came with the blitz that time, and that's scary against the blitz. The, the jailbreak screen against the blitz, really scary for the defense. Let's see it. 
If he hits the crack, which he almost gets into right there, it could be out the gate. Ran into his own man, actually, trying to make a comeback block was Michael Brewster. Trips left on first down. The ball at the 44-yard line of the Broncos. They come with a late blitz this time. Chang airing it out, looking for Gossett. Gossett can't hang on to it. The ball was a little underthrown. Julius Brown right on Gossett. Julius Brown, I think, is a terrific player. He was he did a nice job for Boise State against Hawaii last year. And here you see, again, he shows great awareness. As the ball comes down, he makes a play on the football. He has a receiver on his hip. He's in good shape. He snap turns and drives right here. He maintains good position, finds the football. Nice job. Second and ten. Short drop and skying this one. Little hook route run by Colbert and Chang way overthrew it. Justin Colbert is to receive the pass complete. Yeah, Boise State came with the four-man line again, came with pressure off the corner. Chang had a little pressure. He, he threw maybe a little quick, more quickly than he needed to. Coach so now, Jones calls all the plays, Barry. He's the offensive coordinator on the sideline. Does a terrific job, in my opinion, of helping the quarterback during the course of the game because he played in this offense with Miles Davis when he was in college. And has tweaked it and tweaked it and continues to tweak it. Big play here, third and ten. Everybody coming wide open this time and making the catch is Herbert. And he will have a first down at the 33-yard line. Good job again by the Hawaii offensive line to pick up the blitz. I believe that the strength of Hawaii team on offense is the offensive line. They have tremendous players. You see Herbert pulling that in. Chris Carr knocks him out of bounds. Nice throw by Timmy Chang. A lot on that ball. A little help from the Boise bench. Then get back out there. Go on. Get on your own side. First down and 10, just inside the 33-yard line. Chang will throw for the 24th time in this game. Does, and the ball is caught this time by Colbert. That will be about... I believe that might be a first down again. I thought it might be a little short, but they give him a good spot. It will be another Hawaii first down. And, and here, here's Tim Chang finding a spot. He starts to throw. He pulls the ball back, and now he lets it go. Nice job of finding a crack to Colbert. But Hawaii is now in the area of the field, Barry, where they've stalled out. And let's see if, they, if they've learned something from the first couple of times down the field. I want to ask you about that. That's always been the criticism of the run and shoot. We'll talk about it after this play. Chang straight back, throws, got a man, but unable to hold on is Colbert, who was out of bounds anyway. What about the run and shoot in the red zone? Well, obviously, any, any offense that is primarily pass is going to find that the vertical seams are not going to be there, and you're going to have to run horizontal routes, post corners, post and, and flood routes, and isolation routes to take advantage of position on the field. But that's no matter what offense you have. But obviously, a run-oriented offense, like the wishbone, for instance, has an advantage in this end of the field. But Hawaii has scored a lot of points, Barry, uh, over time in this offense. And Coach Jones believes in it more than anything else. And why not? It works. they got to get this play off. Two seconds, one second, they do. Chang throws over the middle, caught this time by Herbert. Nice catch, short of the first down. By about a yard and a half, maybe two. They will mark this, I believe, somewhere in the area of the 13 or 14 yard line. Here we are. We, we find an outside receiver just coming inside, finding a window to get a ball. The outside receiver is getting the ball, and Boise is trying to keep them in front and making a play on the football. Big play here, and likely two down territory. I would say so. Third down and a little more than two. And they still go out of the shotgun. Blitz comes. Picked up again. Chang throws. Herbert's got it. First down at the seven-yard line. 
just kind of taking what's being given. Taking what's given, and Boise, to, both squads are doing a nice job. Hawaii's taking what they're giving them, as you can see right here from Timmy Chang, and Boise is making them run a lot of plays, complete a lot of passes, do a lot of things right to get a touchdown. Brewster is going to be the setback here. First and goal at the seven-yard line. Give it to Brewster, and Brewster is stopped after a gain of about a yard. Quentin Michael, who's having a nice game, makes the stop. Quentin Michael is a senior from Eugene, Oregon. He's from Willamette High School. He's he's was all conference last year. He's an outstanding football player. Well, he's already been picked as the preseason defensive player of the year in the WAC conference. Yes. And he's playing like it today. Well, this is a big game for both teams, and certainly the enthusiasm here in the Bronco Stadium is terrific. Second down and goal. Got to get the playoff again, and they do. Chang from under center throws too wide, intended for Owens. Now it'll be third down. So it'll be third down and goal at the six-yard line. This will be interesting again to see if Hawaii will will take the field goal or will go for the touchdown if it's if it ends if they end up not getting the score here. This is the 14th play of this drive, and this is and the most important. Trips left. Gossett, the lone wide receiver to the right side. Give it a draw play this time. Brewster is in on touch. Touchdown. touchdown. Good Spread the field out, come back the other way. Absolutely, and this is what they, they ran the same play from the same field position last week, and Timmy Chang went under the center to run it, and he was behind, he was in the shotgun all the rest of the time, and Moanoa, Uriah Moanoa, made a great block to spring Brewster. Try for point now. And the point after is rooted through, and it is now an 11-point ball game. 21 to 10, Boise. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> 21 to 10, Boise State over Hawaii. Hawaii with a 16-play drive for a touchdown. Ayat will kick it off now. He'll be kicking to Michael and Forsey. Michael, remember, had a 98-yard return in the game last year, but he's not going to get a chance. Nobody's had a chance this year. Well, we're at about 2,800 feet here. It's 2,800 feet. It's not zero, but it's uh, it's certainly that ball's going to fly a little better than wood in Honolulu. 15 plays, not 16, and 90 yards, 3 minutes and 55 seconds, and Brewster finishes it on the draw play from 6 yards out. And that's the kind of thing that the defensive coordinator, Ron Collins, from, from Boise is letting his defense know that Hawaii did that same thing in the same down and distance situation, and they need to anticipate better. So Rody will go from under center. Gives off this time to Forsey, and Forsey is forced inside. Gain of a couple. Tino Samoa, Samoa, I beg your pardon, makes the stop. Pisa Tinoi Samoa, he is from... Oceanside area of San Diego. He is related to Junior Seau and is a terrific football player for the University of Hawaii. Second down. Trips right this time as Boise State goes out of the shotgun on second down. Play fake. Rody will throw. Has time. Throws. Caught this time. For our first down. And a big gain that time by Tim Gilligan. Tim Gr Gilligan. Well protected that time was Rody Had all day to throw the ball. That was a nice fake. There's it. You see Gilligan cutting across the middle, making a nice catch. That was a difficult ball to catch. First down at the 41-yard line. Give this time to Forsey. And Forsey gets there in a big hurry. Gets it up to 45, gain of four. 
Well, Forsey's one of those kind of backs, Barry, that sometimes it looks like he's making a yard and a half, and it's four because he runs with good tilt. He bleeds yardage. He just bleeds yardage out of the tackle. He's always falling forward, and that's what all good backs do. So it'll be second down and six. Forsey now 10 carries, 44 yards in the ballgame. Single setback this time, two tight ends. Give it to Forsey again, and not much this time. He has stood straight up by Samu Seva and a lot of help from his friends. A lot better job up front by the University of Hawaii interior. Let's look at these WAC scores here. We've got Fresno State, tremendous job last night against Colorado State. Heck of, heck of a football game. San Jose State, Fitz Hill as the head coach at San Jose, has them sitting with a winning record now, doing a nice job. And Rice and Louisiana Tech in a, in a Donnie Brook. New Mexico State up on UTech. New Mexico State's done a nice job this year. What are you talking about Fitz Hall? He's uh, won three in a row now and really getting it done. Short drop this time and a slant caught. Beautifully by Swilly, and that'll be another first down for Boise State across midfield and into Hawaii territory. Swilly's a terrific target for a slant route, Barry, because he's such a big youngster. He's 6'3", 224 pounds. He turns that big body, gives you a big target for Rody to throw that ball in there. Swilly uh, came out of there, uh, dinged a little bit, might have hurt his shoulder. Yeah, it could be. There's a pitch this time. Forsey trying to get outside. Does. 45 and down to the 43-yard line. Kenny Patton runs him out. Forsey's showing some pretty good quicks. Matt Wright looked like he had an angle on him. Forsey's a terrific player. Meridian, Idaho, Centennial High School, and over 5,000 all-purpose yards in his career. All-conference player. And he is the backbone of the run offense of the Broncos. Come with a slot right this time as Swilly lines up in the slot inside of Gilligan. Two tight ends. Hawaii jumping around, and let's see. We're going to get a flag. And what you saw right there, Barry, that's a freeze play. That's what you call a freeze play where they really didn't, they didn't have a play called, and they were going to give the snap count trying to draw Hawaii offside because in film... Hawaii had shown a propensity to jump off sides, and so Boise State tried to pick up a cheap first down, and Anui Correa jumped off sides, giving them the first down. Tried to pick it up and did pick it up. Ball's at the 37-yard line, and again, Boise State just being very efficient here in every aspect of the game, defensively, offensively, and on special teams. This time they flopped the tight ends, and now bring Strophus up into the fullback position. A lot of motion. Give it to Forsey. Forsey, a little gap. And Forsey taking people with him to the 27-yard line. He took Patton and Peters right with him. Watch this. This is a nice job by the interior offensive line. It's a trap play right up the middle. And the University of Hawaii missed several tackles. LeBoy missed him in the hole. And Forsey... Running with great power and good forward tilt. I think the, the biggest thing to me, Barry, in this game so far is Boise State's ability to run the ball inside against the University of Hawaii. And the University of Hawaii is going to have to solve that in this football game or it's going to be a long night. I think that's right. And I think also, Dick, that they're controlling the line of scrimmage pretty well. Yes, yes. Well, that's what you have to do to be able to run inside. And they're trapping. They're running straight. Uh, they're doing several different things, and Scott Huff at center is 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 the is the force right now for Boise State. See the rushing yards, 80 for Boise State, 41 for Hawaii. And it seems like more than that sitting up here in the press box. It does. I would have thought it was more than that. Second and short now, so another free play here, and they give it to Forsey, and Forsey's going to get a first down. Virtually the same play as the last one, and Forsey takes it down about the 22 or 23 yard line. I love the way Forsey runs because he accelerates into contact. Some people hesitate into contact, and he accelerates into and through contact. Watch the work of the offensive line that Boise State does. Here it is up front. 
They keep their pads down, and Forsey accelerates into the hole. First down, give it to Forsey again. Bounces outside, still on his feet, tries to get to the outside, and is hauled down at the 20-yard line. Again, a three, Hiram Peters was not about to let it go. Well, they plugged the original hole that time, the University of Hawaii did, and caused Forsey to have to cut back. Got him running sideways, and if you can get a good back running sideways, let's see it here, it's a trap play. They seal it off, he cuts back, you get him running sideways, and then Hiram Peters is able to come up and make the tackle, along with help from his friends. We have, we have, we have an injury on the field. And it's Peters. As Hiram you, Peters. You look at the offensive line, College, Havis, Huff, Vian, and Colburn. For Boise Stable, Colburn out now. It's Jason Turner. And they have done a brilliant job. See that big guy in the shot right there? Darren College. Interesting story. Comes from North Pole, Alaska. Hiram Peters out of the game, Barry. Forcey in motion this time. Rodeo put it up. Quick toss to Wingfield. He gets it down to the 10-yard line. And his stop inside the 10 at about the 9-yard line. Well executed again. Travis LeBoy saved a touchdown. Well, again, the wide receiver screen. This play is a devastating play in college football because the offensive lineman can go downfield and Wingfield hits the crack and he's got himself a 10-yard gain before, before you can even notice it. Three straight completions now for Rohde. When you run the ball, it makes it a lot easier to pass. First and goal at the nine-yard line. This is going to be Michael. Tries to bounce it outside. Got a little lane to the corner and he dives. He's in. Touchdown, Boise State. David Michael. Nice job by David Michael. The one-two punch at tailback with Boise State. David Michael and Brock Forsey right now is making it tough on the University of Hawaii. Now, I just thought that was a wonderful execution on that drive from beginning to end. Well, it was, and they had the freeze play. They did a little bit of everything. They threw the ball. They ran the ball. They ran the freeze play. It was a very well-conceived drive by Dan Hawkins. Chris Peterson upstairs, the offensive coordinator. Kaleke to try the point. He gets it up. He gets it through. And just like that, Boise State has cranked it up to a 28-10 lead. 5.09 remaining to be played in the first half. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN+. Plus. Uh, Justin Wilcox, a guy who... Uh, Played a little football, and his daddy played a little football, too. Big Oregon connection at Boise State. There's six coaches on their staff. They either played or coached at the University of Oregon. So if anything's familiar out here from Mike Bellotti's offense, uh, it's not an accident. This kick is going to be handled this time by Brewster, and Brewster pops it out to about the 22, and a late flag comes in. So Hawaii very likely will go backward again. That's never good for the return team when the late flag comes in there. So we'll see what this is all about, but it's very likely it's going to be a hold, and it's going to make Hawaii start uh, down around its 12-yard line. Not going away that that man uh, expected it might. Well, not During the return, half the distance, first down. Not the way June Jones hoped it would go, but... June's been in enough football games, as has the Hawaii Rain Wait Royers, that they understand that they can fight their way back into this thing. Both of these teams, Barry, are very, very well coached. Hawaii this time goes with an empty backfield. They bring Herbert in motion. Herbert caught three balls on that last touchdown drive. They give it to Herbert on a wing-back reverse this time, and nothing do it. Got a yard, maybe two, there to turn the play around was Julius Roberts. Well, a reminder coming right here to uh, Boise, Idaho, the Humanitarian Bowl. It takes place on uh, December 31st, last day of the year, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Tickets are available. Call 208-426-4737. The Humanitarian Bowl, you can watch it right here on ESPN. Herbert in motion again on second down and eight. 
Chang to throw. Under pressure, throws, and the catch is made by Colbert short of the first down. Bobby Hammer was uh, putting a push on Chang that time, and he had to unload the ball just a tick early. That was a nice job by Tim Chang getting rid of that ball and throwing a ball that Herbert could catch. And now Hawaii with their first real short yard, crucial short yardage situation here in the football game. Third down and a little bit over a yard. Trips right. Chang will go out of the shotgun, and somebody came out of their stance early, and it might have been Monowai. It was Vince Monowai, the defensive tackle, started to move, and Vince jumped out of his stance. And you won't see that very much from the senior. Guy that's on the Outland Trophy watch list. Three-year starter here at Hawaii. And I would say in Coach Jones's offense, it won't make much difference between third and one and third and five or six. Out of the shotgun again, Chang. Straight back, four-man rush. Steps up, throws deep. Intercepted. Picked off by Gabe Franklin, and Boise State is going to be in business in Hawaii territory once again. Great interception by Gabe Franklin. The two Boise State corners, Franklin and Julius Brown, and Chris Carr, the, the uh, nickelback, do a terrific job. And this is great underneath coverage. And Tim Chang was looking back at the receiver all the way right there. And Gabe Franklin just ran right under the route. He had two deep coverage with man underneath all the way. Second interception of the year for Franklin. He had three last year. They go out of the eye formation this time. Boy, they give you a lot of different looks. Here's Forsey, and he gets a couple. Stopped by Chris Brown, the middle backer. Now, if you're Dan Hawkins, you're saying to yourself right here, you don't want Hawaii to get the ball back before the half. You'd like to put together a couple of first downs. You'd love to score right here. But at the very least, you want to you want to consume the rest of the clock in this in this half. They bring Fanuki to the left side. Gilligan slotted inside of him. Give it to Forsey again. And this time Forsey is stopped just as he gets the line of scrimmage by Travis LeBoy. Nice play by LeBoy. And one of these days they're going to hand that ball to that Z back coming through there. And uh, he's going he's gonna to try the, the outside. That's part of that whole series. Not a bad time for it right now. Third and seven. Again, Fanuki to the near side. Swilly in the slot this time. And Wingfield to the far side. Out of the shotgun. Rodeo put it up. Blitz comes. Picked up. Throws. And incomplete through the hands of Billy Wingfield. Now, this is an interesting call right here for, for Boise State because they've gone for it on fourth down this year 35 times. They've made 19 of those, gone as much as anybody in the nation for 54.3%. And they may well go on fourth down again because this is that iffy position too far for a field goal. Yeah, it's too far, so they're going on fourth. Well, it is far, although their kicker, Jones, hit a 52-yarder and a 57-yarder in practice here on Wednesday in similar kind of conditions. Of course, you'd have a bunch of guys running at him. They go out of the shotgun. Then blitz comes. Rodey unloads, and what a catch made by Swilly in traffic. Two defenders there, and Swilly comes up with the ball. Tito Samoa and Hiram Peters were right there, and somehow Jay Swilly made the catch. Nice throw by Rodey. That's the 20th time out of 36 that they've made on fourth down this year. There's Swilly with the big body, and Hiram Peters just can't get around the big body. There you see Rodey unloading. Giving him a nice ball. Again, that's the 20th time in 36 attempt this year on fourth down that Boise State has made it. What a catch by Swilly. Forsey comes in motion. Rody will throw. Good protection again. Rody looking for the end zone for Forsey and overthrows him. Kelvin Milhouse, nice job defending that time. Kelvin Milhouse played junior college football at Santa Ana College. A big, rangy cornerback. 
much like uh, a couple of the Boise State defensive backs, which gives them a better chance against some of the big receivers. And a lot of the Hawaii coaches feel that uh, Milhouse is a guy who has an opportunity to play at the next level. Just a junior, he'll be back next year. It's time they flop the tight ends again. When they do that, they bring Strophus back up into the fullback position. In motion is Gilligan. And a little play fake and give to Forsey. And Forsey gets it to about the 23-yard line. Barry, I'm just looking for the time tonight when I can say Gilligan is on an island. Absolutely. Gilligan's an interesting story. You know, he came to Boise State. Not only did he come as a walk-on, but he came as a walk-on kicker. There you go. And there are a million of those. And now he's, now he's a full-time player doing a terrific job. Third down and seven now. Big play here. And now a flag. And it's going to be a substitution penalty, I'm quite sure. They were trying to hustle a man off. Well, and the good thing you see there, Barry, is, is they... The college football has tried to uh, tried to clean up the substitution rules so that there uh, several years ago people were were putting 12, 13, 14 guys in the huddle and they've really stiffened up the rules so you've got to get people clearly in or out of the huddle so sometimes people get caught in a in a switch but I think that's that it really helps the rules to to have that stipulation. They were trying to get Rocky Atkinson off the field couldn't do it so now they're looking at third and 12. Rody straight back. Again, they pick the blitz up. Rody steps up, runs out of time now, and is hauled down at the 35-yard line by Chris Brown. See, and Dan Hawkins is saying right now to B.J. Rody that you've got to throw that football because we're in field goal range. We've got a, a kick at a field goal, and now, now we're, we've got a kick at a huge field goal. But well, that's a place right there, Barry, where the quarterback needs to get rid of that ball. Uh, and... and uh, they are right back where they were the last time we discussed field goal. They're yeah, at the 35-yard exactly. line. Going to be a 52-yarder. Yeah. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN+. Plus. Was making them from anywhere from 52 to 57 yards in practice on Wednesday. He's the long kicker. Kaleke is usually the field goal kicker, but from this distance they go with Jones. Strong leg, snap, placed, kicked. He's got enough distance if he's straight. And he is! 52-yarder to end the first half. And that really, I believe, Dick, puts the icing on the cake for Boise State. A tremendous 30 minutes of football. A wonderful 30 minutes of football. A domination in the kicking game, the turnover area, and controlling the football with the Boise State running game. Uh, and as Hawaii goes off the field, they're going to have to really rejuvenate themselves to come out because this crowd and the Boise State football team are ready for a, a Boise State victory here tonight. And Boise's played great at home for years. They absolutely have, yeah. And watch this kick again. Jones plenty on it from 52. That would have been good from 62. A happy guy and a happy teammates all around him. That, that was a big big kick and yes we're at 2800 feet but i don't care well, that was it is it just somebody said once that everybody's got a great kick kickers are like navels everybody's got one <laughs> well they got two actually and this have. is the second one not everybody's got two 31 <laughs> to 10 you're watching whack football from espn plus broncos lead the hawaii warriors by 21 let's take a look at some of the highlights Boise State, Dick, made the big plays, and that's the difference in the game. Well, they sure did. Here you see Archery throwing the ball back to Heck for the touchdown off the double reverse, the block kick by Chris Carr. He blocks it and then recovers it, which is an incredibly tough thing to do. Here you see Quentin Michael knock the ball loose, and Avalos picks it up and takes it down to the six-yard line, and Bach Forsey put in the exclamation exclamation point on it with the touchdown, and Boise State has a 31-10 lead. There you see Michael finding Michael. the end zone right there. Dan Hawkins, this is the guy, I really enjoyed our talk with him yesterday. He, he takes the philosophy of his college coach, who was an old pal of mine, and one of the great football minds, Jimmy Soaker, who's a very calm guy, treats his players like uh, friends as much as he does like students. Michael's going to come out with this. At the 10, at the 20, look out, 30. And dragged down at the 39-yard line. 
Justin Ayat, the kicker, and a flag is down right at the 33-yard line. First half stats, Barry would say that, that, you know, rush yards, pass yards, total yards don't make much difference. Neither do first downs. It's turnovers, it's kicking game that are the cause for the disparity in the score right here because yards are just about exactly even. Isn't that interesting? Dead ball, personal foul on the receiving team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. So a personal foul penalty against Boise State is going to negate a good part of uh, an excellent run by David Michael. Well, David put, took that ball out of the end zone because he averaged almost 28 yards of return last year and the year before. Has great confidence in the return. people that are blocking for him on kick returns. So they will start at the 24-yard line. Even at that, they wind up uh, better than your average position. Here's Forsey on first down, and Forsey just gets a couple to about the 25-yard line. Lance Samuseva on the stop for Hawaii. Hawaii has to stop the inside running game if they expect to win this football game. And that was a good start for Kevin Lempa, the Hawaii defensive coordinator's uh, defense, and Vance Singletary, their defensive line coach, a better job by his front people. You see the numbers on the uh, two quarterbacks. Chang put it up 30 times in the first half. Rohde, only 14, completed eight of them. Second down and nine. Out of the shotgun, Rohde will throw, has time, throws underneath for Forsey. And Forsey gets it to about the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of about five. It'll bring about a third and four. Matt Wright runs him out for the Warriors. Matt Wright's a young man that's just gotten better and better and better and playing terrific football for the University of Hawaii at this point in the season. This is a big third down for the University of Hawaii defense. They need a stop. They need the ball back so their offense can go to work. Got a third down and four as they spot the ball right at the 30-yard line. Slot left this time, and now in motion goes Fanuki. Little toss to Fanuki on that screen again, and I think he's going to get it. It'll depend on the spot, and I believe he made it. The wide receiver screen, Boise State was in an unbalanced line that time. Hawaii moved to compensate the unbalanced line. You'll see Fanuki receive the ball on the wide receiver screen and just get the first down. Well, we said this earlier, but Boise State, they, they give you so many looks. I mean, they've run out of the eye. They've run out of trips. They've run out of two tights, two wide outs. They've run out of a double wing. They've run out, out of a double slot. They give it all to you. And a lot of motion. Yes, very diverse offense. Rody give to Forsey this time, and Forsey taking people with him again. Five yards on first down. You make five yards on first down, you're going to do okay. Well, that's a def an offensive coordinator's uh, dream is to make five yards on first down running right up the gut. That gives you a lot of options on second and third down. And you said this earlier, but at some point they're going to give it off to the, to the wing back coming around here. They have not done that yet. Second down and five. Forsey now 20 carries, 80 yards. There's a pitch to Forsey again, runs left, and this time he's going to lose a yard or two. Hiram Peters, first man to him. That's Pisa Tinoy Samoa making the play. Hiram Peters was to him first. This is a nice job. Boise State's had more success running inside than outside. So that'll be third down and six. And again, another one of those pivotal plays early in the third quarter. Third and six. Slot right this time on third down. That's Swilly in the slot. Straight back is Rohde. Under pressure throw. Swilly makes the catch at midfield. First down Broncos into Hawaii territory at the 49. That's another half roll pass where Rohde rolled toward the re receiver and unloaded the ball to the outside, giving him a better angle, and Swilly makes the nice catch. Really get the sense, Dick, that who scores first here in the third quarter is going to go a long way toward deciding what happens. Well, that'll sure be a leg up, Barry, because Hawaii needs the ball back for their offense to go to work, and these long drives really take it out of you. Slot left again, quick toss this time to Gilligan, and Gilligan couldn't make the catch. It was a one-hopper, and that's probably for the better, actually. Yeah, he was he was going to be covered. That was a 
A little counter fake and throw it back to Gilligan. And you saw Rhodey say, that's on me. My bad. Rhodey's brother, Jeff Rhodey, is on the trip. He plays for the University of Hawaii. So mom and dad, Rhodey, are probably up in the stands. They're pulling for BJ, who's playing in the football game, but they have a great deal of empathy for the University of Hawaii and for their other son, Jeff. I bet. Out of Eugene, Oregon, you mentioned that earlier. Coached in high school by Chris Miller, the old Oregon quarterback and NFL quarterback, and that time a little bobble and wisely falling on the ball was Forsey. Now, I think that's a great play by Forsey right there, Barry, because how many times do you see people drop the ball and the player that drops it try to pick it up? But he didn't try to pick it up. He fell on it because possession of the ball at this point, that is the quarterback's fault. That's the quarterback's fault. He did not look it in. He did not look it into the pocket. He kind of slammed it in there. Nice job of Forsey of maintaining possession of the football. So now it's third and long. Third down and 12. In motion goes Swilly, and somebody might have jumped. On the right side of the offensive line. Five yard penalty, still third down. Now it'll be third and 17. Third and 17. Who wants to call this one? <laughs> the offensive coordinator is taking volunteers here. I'll call that jailbreak screen again. I think we're going to get a crossing route underneath and give somebody a chance to catch and run. Slot right. They line Swilly up in the slot. And now bringing in motion. Rhodey steps up with time. Throws deep. Got a man. Wingfield. Makes the catch, first down, Broncos. This, this is a, this is a, a very predictable throw by the University by Boise State here. This is a play that the University of Oregon, when Chris Peterson was there, they made a living on the throwback post corner. And Kenny Patton, the true freshman, hasn't seen a lot of those. That's a nice job. Uh, execution by Boise State's offense. Isn't that a tough pass for the quarterback to throw it's also across the field? Pass, but if you've got enough arm and you can get it there, it's it's also a tough pass to defend. Straight ahead to force he's grabbed from behind, thrown backward. Travis LeBoy, first man, grabbed him from behind, coming from the backside, and Chris Brown knocked him back. Boy, Brown's always around the ball. He is. Chris Brown, Damian High School, a senior at the University of Hawaii. Here's the play inside. We see the, the defensive front by Hawaii with, with Travis LeBoy coming down hard. Lance Samuseva, Chris Brown all making a nice play on, on the ball. Hawaii is starting to tee off a little bit on Forsey. His last three rushes for minus three yards. Rodeo will go up again. Rolls to his left. Buys plenty of time. And throws too wide, intended for Wingfield. I think Rhodey uh, heard the footsteps coming, and they were coming. Tinoy Samoa was back defending on Billy Wingfield, and uh, a pretty good late rush by the Warriors on Rhodey. What you see from Boise State's offense, Barry, is they have several different launch points. They're moving out to the left, moving out to the right, going straight back. So the quarterback is hard to find for the defense, and it's difficult to blitz consistently because of the different launch points. 12th play of this drive, as you see. But third and 10. Rhodey straight back again. Little half roll, steps up, throws, got Wingfield again. First down. Boy, two third down and long passes to Wingfield, keeping this drive alive again in front of Kenny Patton. Rhodey threw this ball with great authority, threw it right down the sprinkler system, right down the middle of the field. Lot on this ball, as you have to have when you throw it inside, and Wingfield, senior receiver, making a nice play on the football. Out of Carson High School in Long Beach, I, I have no doubt you recruited guys out of there. It's a football High School, factory. If you want a list of them, it's great football in the South Bay. Here's a give this time to Forsey again. And Forsey gets one or two. Again, they showed that reverse with Tim Gilligan coming. Sapawanga and Matt Wright on the stop for Hawaii. 
Well, the first team to popularize that series was Iowa State with Dan McCarney when they had all that succession of running, outstanding running backs, and uh, they made that very popular. It has a lot of, lot of different options to it. Dan Hawkins has to be liking what he's seeing so far in his team's performance. Here's a draw play. Forcey with a gap to the 15 and down to the 13-yard line. That will be close to another first down. Might be a half yard short. Hiram Peters makes the tackle. Hawaii just needs a play. You need a turnover. Here's Forcey up, up the gut on the delay draw. Nice job by Strophus. Well, they are keeping Hawaii's defense back on its heels. I mean, Hawaii can't guess with them, and they, they give you so many different looks and have run so many different plays. Give it a 4 C, and I don't know. He might be stopped short. I don't think he got it, but my guess is that they'll go here. They'll go on fourth down. They're 20 for 36 on fourth down. Let's listen to this hit. So you want to play college football. Holy mackerel. No, thank you. Travis LeBoy, who comes by his uh, football ability. Honestly, his dad, Cliff, was a terrific player at the University of Hawaii years ago. There's a sneak by Rody, and he got it, I believe. Rody's a big guy, 6'4", 240, and you don't move him out of the way very easily. He got a little gap and got the first down. Well, that was just a quick snap count. A flag oh, is Barry. down. Flag is down, however, and let's see. Boise State came to the line of scrimmage quickly and snapped the ball. Yeah, they're going to go. I believe they're going to go backward here. Let's see. Maybe not. Nope, it's going to be against Hawaii. Results in an automatic first down. Well, that was another nice job by Boise. They hurried to the line of scrimmage and got down and snapped it and caught Hawaii in the neutral zone. <laughs> It's Again, a nice job of the coaching staff of having something for situational football. Come to the line of scrimmage, snap it, possibly catch the other team offside. I have to say, I was really impressed with both coaching staffs yesterday. Talk more about that in a moment. Here's a pitch to Forsey. Forsey tried to cut it back and was grabbed nicely on a very good defensive play by Houston Allah. Houston Ala, a terrific player, played at Kamehameha Schools in Honolulu, played for Coach Bill Souza. Nice job on the sweep play. But both staffs are terrific. They both, Hawaii staff, they won nine games last year. Boise State won eight games. Both did a terrific job and have outstanding football teams again this year. I just, I really like the way both coaches treat their players. I mean, it's just a really nice environment around both these schools. Second down. Here's the option. And Michael trying to get the other way. If he can get the corner, he's got room, but he's going to get thrown way back. All the way back at the 20-yard line, maybe the 21-yard line. Hiram Peters turned him around. Kenny Patton finished it. Just a down-the-line option, a speed option play, which Boise State has not run as much with Rody as quarterback as they did with Dinwiddie at quarterback. It's a very popular play. As you see it here, Hawaii plays it very well. And Michael tries to make some chicken out of chicken salad coming back to the backside, and Hawaii's all over it. Loss of nine is the end result. They're back at the 18-yard line, and it's third down and goal. Long way to go. They've been forcing in the slot. And now whistles blow. And... Rody wants a timeout. He just didn't like what he, he didn't like what he saw there. So we'll take a timeout. 5:24 remaining to be played. Third quarter, 31 to 10, Boise State. Welcome back, 31 to 10 ball game. Look at Timmy Chang. He's uh, sitting around with his hands in his pockets, and he's been doing it for nine and a half minutes. You want to know how to beat the run and shoot? Keep your offense out in the field for this long. Well, that, that works against any offense. It's a terrific drive by, by Boise State. Straight back to pass. Rody throws a screen. It could go. Michael at the 10. Still on his feet. 
gets down to about the five yard line. And now again, it's decision time for Dan Hawkins. It'll be fourth and goal at the five yard line. I would think they would go for it, Barry, and leave the leave the ball down there if they don't make it. If they don't, if they kick the field goal, the ball comes out to the 20 if, if they miss. And they'll take a chance on leaving it down there, you would think, although. So it's fourth down and goal. The ball at the five-yard line. They stack the receivers this time. It's the first time we've seen this particular set. Rody straight back, shovel pass, Forsey, touchdown Boise. How do you like it? Terrific job, what a call. They stack the receivers, they thin out the Hawaii defensive front inside and run the shovel pass. That was just a great play. That's a nice job by Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator of, of find, finding a call here that can work in this situation. And he raided and waited. I thought Rody did a great job. Tino Samoa, Samoa was right on him. And he waited for him to be on him and then threw a little shovel pass. Yeah, he did. He had to wait to just give the play a chance to materialize. And now Hawaii at some point here is going to have to go into a quicker mode on offense. Exactly. Just, just they've got to run a lot of plays. Exactly the way they would have drawn it up. Ten minute drive. You're watching Black Football from ESPN+. Plus. Well, you couldn't script this any better if you're on the Boise State sideline right now. 38-10, to 10, Boise State leads by 28. Hawaii's about to get the ball for the first time in this half. Look at that. 10 minutes, 22 seconds, 19 plays, 76 yards, and the most important thing, they scored a touchdown. 4C on a five-yard shovel pass. You just can't draw it up any better than that. Here's the guys that really got it done, the guys up front. There they are. They've done a terrific job, and Jason Turner's filling in at right tackle. So a terrific job by the by the offensive line at, at Boise State. But Hawaii's defense just has to get them off the field with a turnover or a stop during that drive. Brewster at the one-yard line, and he's not going far. Cracked at the 10, and then thrown back down all the way at the two-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. Oh, remember the numbers that we talked about in pregame, and you made the point, Dick, that Hawaii hasn't faced anybody quite like this yet. Boy, look at these. Well, they hadn't faced anybody as diverse as Boise State. Different formations, run and pass, a lot of imagination, and you can see the difference uh, in the numbers tonight. And certainly, uh, that means that Hawaii's got, got work to do. They've got a quarter to play, and those numbers are going to be inflated. Uh, from where you see him now. You know, you had the idea that something like this was coming. The first thing Dan Hawkins said to us when we spoke to him yesterday was, we're getting remarkably better. And it really shows tonight. Chang will pass from his own end zone. Ste steps up, throws deep, nobody there. The other thing that Hawkins talked about, he was saying against Utah State, he said, we probably could have scored 65 or 70 points. He said, we got a little water in our gas tank every now and then, and uh, meaning that they made mistakes every now and then. Tonight, they have played virtually mistake-free football. Well, this is the kind of game Boise State needed. They needed a game where they won the turnover battle. They played great in the kicking game, but they've kept the chains moving. They've kept the chains moving. They've kept Hawaii's uh, offense off of the field, and Hawaii's defense has not been able to come up with the stop when they needed it. Second down and 10. They marked this at the eight-yard line, incidentally. Quick toss this time to Gossett, and Gossett makes the catch and is dropped almost immediately at about the 13-yard line. And the big thing tonight here, Barry, is offensive football in the year 2002 is about making chunks. You've got to make chunks at some point in time. And Hawaii's offense, as wide open as it is, has not come up with the chunks tonight. They've had things happen just like that where it's five yards, it's six or seven. They're not getting yardage after the catch. It's uh, There are no chunks to be had at this point. I remember Mike Price up at Washington State always talks about explosion plays. He yes. says, you got to get five or six explosion plays, which he interprets as plays over 25 yards. Chang throws, and the catch is made for a first down by Owens. And credit the, the Boise State defense, but every time a Hawaii receiver catches the football, he's got somebody right in his shorts. He's got Quentin Michael right there in his shorts for, for to minimize the game 
And that just shows that Boise State's defense is very, very well prepared for this football game. Quinn Michael having a very big game defensively for Boise State. So is Andy Avalos. Well, and this is a very senior Boise State team, so it was expected that they have a good football team. Chang on first down. A few steps to his right. Now he steps out, airs it out. And plenty of company there for Chad Owens. Safety coming over was Wes Nurse. Wherever Chad Owens goes at this time in the ballgame, he's going to have company because they know that he's a big play guy for the University of Hawaii. We had Chris Carr and Wes Nurse bracketing him on this last play, as you see. Second down and 10. This time... Cochran comes to the near side in a trips right set. Straight back Chang throws and it is caught and that's going to be close to a first down. Justin Colbert on the catch. And I think he's going to have it. This is a nice ball. Good throw and catch. Good protection by the offensive line. Timmy Chang with a lot of time, as you see the offensive line doing a nice job. Foot is down, it's a catch. And that's Julius Brown on the coverage. First down at the 31 yard line, again out of the shotgun, long count this time. Chang straight back, steps up, buys time, throws back to Owens, and Owens at 35, at the 40, trying to get to the outside, and can't, sure tackling once again by Gabe Franklin, but that's gonna be another Hawaii first down. Very sure tackling by the Boise State secondary people, the linebackers, you see, you see this play, Chang is gonna work to his left, he's gonna come all the way back across the field, as you see, to Chad Owens, and Quentin Michael comes up, misses a tackle, and then Gabe Franklin with a tremendous tackle, head in front, Good balance, excellent tackling by the Boise State defensive football team. But the chains move, ball at the 42-yard line, a gain of 11 on that last play. Chang straight back again. And the pass is caught this time. And picked up on a loose ball by Nurse. And Nurse is at the 25, trips and falls at the 20-yard line. And again, Boise State making the opportunistic play after the completed pass. They're just making Hawaii make a lot of plays to make a very few yards, and they're coming up the play with the play. That's Britton Komeni with the football. This is a nice throw and catch. But he knocks, the ball is knocked out. Absolutely. Nice job of holding his arms back so he couldn't go get it. Wes Nurse gets the football. Tremendous job, by, again, by Boise State's defensive football team. Big time. Just, and they make all the big plays. They've made every big play in this game. 35-yard return for Nurse. And the Boise State offense starts at the 20-yard line of Hawaii. Offset eye. Slot left. Play fake. Rodeo throw. Throws for the end zone. Got a man. And unable to hang on in the end zone was David Michael. Had the ball in his hands, just couldn't hang on. David Michael will, will never be any more wide open than that. They put him at, at power back. They put him at full back that time. Got him free out of the backfield on a wheel route. Yep, that's one. And David Gilmore, catch. David Gilmore in the coverage got, got uh, their signals crossed. So Hawaii dodges a bullet. Here's a play fake and Rody rolling to his right. I think that was designed as a keeper. In any case, it only gained a yard. La Anui Correa on the stop for Hawaii. Remember last night, Fresno State hanging on to beat Colorado State. Colorado State a chance to tie. San Jose State wins their third in a row, 34-23. Rice coming back, trying to win its first game, 24-20. New Mexico State easy over UTEP in the third quarter. And UNLV ahead of Nevada. That game just underway. Third down now and eight. 
Rudy again with time, throws, comebacker, caught by Winfield, and he steps out of bounds. A couple yards short of the first down, and if Hawkins is going to be consistent, he's going to go for it here on fourth and two. Yeah, he really doesn't need a field goal right now. He needs to maintain position of the football. June Jones wants to see his team continue to believe they can win, continue to fight, to just spill her guts all over the field and play hard, and, and something could happen. But certainly Boise State is playing great football at this point in terms of not making mistakes and making all the plays. And Rhodey's going to take a timeout. Now, there was a little confusion. Michael was talking to the bench trying to understand what was being said. Probably a good timeout taken by B.J. Rhodey. We'll take a timeout as well. 108 remaining third quarter. And once again, Boise State driving. They have the lead by 28, 38 to 10. You're watching WAC Football on ESPN+. Plus. A bench looking on. Boise State now trying to go for it on fourth down again. They have not failed yet tonight on fourth down attempts. They like to run the speed option down here. They have Michael in the backfield right now as the lone setback and Forsey in the slot. Give it to Forsey. Or rather fit, play fake and a pass and into the end zone for a touchdown goes Swilling. And again, just bringing something new. Yes. Yes, that's part of their package, but they they shift to the they shift to the power eye, run the counter pass, and bring Swilly, the big body, across the middle middle of the football field. And Rhodey does not have a difficult throw here. Well, I think the, the thing is, not only have they converted on fourth downs, they've twice turned fourth downs into touchdowns. Yes, absolutely. And so for the season, you know, that's three for three on fourth down for the season. Now they're 22 for 38 on fourth down. Try for point is up and good by Kaleke, and it is a 45 to 10 Boise State lead, and they are spanking Hawaii right now. They are now. spanking Hawaii is exactly right, and what June Jones wants to see is he just wants to see his people fight. Well, it started with another turnover, and uh, there's got to be a happy guy, but his team came here tonight absolutely ready to play. Here was the fumble. There's Picked the up. fumble return. That's Nurse, 35 yards on this return. West does a nice job. He loses his feet. We got a fourth down right here. We've got motion. We got the counter fake. And Rhodey throwing a nice catchable ball in there to Swilly. And he powers the ball into the end zone with his big body. Sixth catch of the ball game for Swilly. There's a Boise State fan who is imploding with joy. So that one didn't take long. The last one looked t took 10 minutes and 20 seconds. This one just over a minute. And just like that, it's a 35-point lead, less than a minute remaining third quarter. Jones will kick it off again. And Brewster will handle this one right at the goal line. He gets back to 10 to the 15, right up the middle across the 20 to the 23. I think we're seeing evidence tonight. I, I have felt for the last few years that the Oregon offensive system had replaced the West Coast offensive system on the West Coast as being the most difficult system to defend. And I believe that tonight we're seeing evidence of that. Well, both these teams are hoping to make an appearance uh, in Hawaii. Of course, uh, the home team, uh, the Warriors, trying to get to the Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. And you can be a part of college football's newest game as well. What a great reward to a team and its fans. The Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl that takes place on Christmas Day in Honolulu. Chang in trouble and throws underneath that time, trying to hit Mitchell, and uh, Mitchell couldn't hang on, probably for the better. Hawaii right now just trying to, just need, again, trying to keep things going. They need some chunks to get back in the football game. But right now, just concentrating on making a drive, putting a drive together, get in the end zone, and then go from there. Hawaii just trying to get into some kind of a rhythm. Right now, they're a little bit out of sync. Chang in trouble. They're coming after him. Chang on loads. got a man. And making the catch is Komini. And he gets it down about the 32-yard line. So a big gain and a flag roughing the passer way back at the 16-yard line. That's going to be tacked on to the end of this run. Excellent throw by Timmy Chang to Komini on a little post-corner route. Boise State up pressing with a 35-point lead. 
Just really challenging the Hawaii wide receivers. Chang paid the price there, and Komini comes down the sideline. They've been getting nice after Chang catch. a little bit, but that was an excellent throw, and they're going to tack the 15 onto the end of that, so that's going to take the Warriors all the way down inside the 16-yard line. Komini with his first catch, his second catch. He caught one before, only to cough it up and have it go the other way. And that's Chauncey Ako. That's not a nice, that's not a good play, not a smart play by Chauncey. Very atypical of, of, of him in that situation. Trips left this time for the Warriors. Quick toss on that slant to Colbert, and he gets it inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line. Wes Nurse makes the stop. It'll be a gain of about 7 or 8. As the clock ticks down and the third quarter will come to an end. So the end of three quarters and a quarter that was dominated by Boise State. They lead it 45 to 10. 15 minutes of football remaining. We're coming back to Bronco Stadium right after this. Go BSU. I myself have been accused of having gone to BSU. <laughs> Barry, I've never said that. Now. <laughs> 45 to 10 as we start the final quarter. Hawaii on the move, though. Give on an inside handoff this time to Brewster, and he's stacked up. And it'll be third down and about two. Well, Hawaii needs a touchdown here, and they need to touch. They need touchdowns quickly. Well, we've seen some frantic comebacks today. Texas Tech coming back with four touchdowns against Texas A&M to win by a point. Well, you don't think anything for granted in college football. That's what why college football is a wonderful game. Because anytime you're making your living based on what 20-year-olds are going to do on Saturday night, uh, anything can happen. That was my old pal George Ravlin's old line about hating the idea of an 18-year-old kid in short pants with his paycheck in his pocket. Brewster takes it down to the two-yard line. That'll be a first down. Nice job by Brewster of running tough. Uh, Timmy Chang's got the option to keep that sometime. Holy cow, he's coming off the corner there, just roaring and nobody in sight. Now they put Sean Withy Allen, the other quarterback in the game, and he is the running quarterback. And so, again, they, the Boise State defense now has to have something in their headgear that just clicks on now. Seven's in the game. The quarterback run is, is up. Look at this. Hawaii's got more total yards than Boise State. Boise State leads by 35. It's a funny game, isn't it? Give to Mitchell. Mitchell trying to get there, and I think he's going to be stopped short. It's a funny game, but, but again, as we said earlier, it pays off in turnover, margin, kicking game, those kind of things. And that's why offensive yards and first downs, possession time don't mean as much. Alex Guerrero was the man who turned Mitchell back right at the goal line. It'll be second down and goal from inside the one-yard line. This might be quarterback sneak material right here. With the Allen, good-sized guy also, 6'4", 219. He does. He steps to his right, sneaks in, and he's there. Touchdown, Hawaii. That's a nice job. Steve Young was the best I've ever seen at that. He's just finding the bubble in the defense. Go down the line until you find the bubble in the defense and fall in the end zone. With the Allen is 6'4". He weighs 225 or 30 pounds, maybe 240. He does exactly that for the touchdown. So the try for point now to cut this lead down to 28, and in most cases you say, well, they're just about all done dancing, but when you can throw the football like June Jones Hawaii Warriors, uh, you never quite say that. Try for point is up and good, and it is a 45-17 to ball game. 13-10 remaining to be played. Boise State leads it by 28. You're watching Black Football from ESPN+. Plus. 13 minutes, 10 seconds remaining to be played, and the Warriors have cut it to 28. It's 45 to 17, but they got to give it back to Boise State. I had to kick it away. He'll be kicking to Michael and Forsey, and he just pops it up. Onside kick attempt, and it is handled at the 40-yard line. Wasn't a big surprise. 
That was just a pop-over kick. You know, they accelerate into the ball. You pop it up. Hawaii taking their chances on that, and now the Hawaii defense needs to come up, and and uh, that was Travis Berger that covered that ball. Hawaii defense needs to come up now and stop the run, make Boise State throw the football, and then they just got to make some plays on the ball. Haven't been able to do that thus far in the second half. I mean, just Hawaii needs to draw a line in the sand here and just play aggressive. They almost need to play like the 50-yard line as the goal line. They need to get the ball back. Boise comes right to the line of scrimmage. Rohde has done an excellent job. Play fake, going to throw, batted in the air. Nice job to get the hands up that time by Houston Ala. Tim Gilligan, the intended receiver of the pass was incomplete. Now they threw the, the quick pass off the, the little counter fake, and they may throw the pump and go off of that because Hawaii's corner really bit. They may throw the pump and go off that. Houston Ala making a nice play that time. He's only a sophomore, has a very, very bright future for the University of Hawaii. Then they flop the tight ends and bring Strophus up into that fullback position and start Winfield in motion. And they give it straight ahead to Forsey. Gets it to the 45-yard line, a gain of four. Chris Brown on the stop. And really, for, for Boise State right now, uh, Barry, time is more is more valuable than points. They need to they need to use time and they need to keep the ball going, but they need to use time. And a big play right here, third down and six. Now they've made, as we said earlier, every big play, offensively, defensively, and on special teams, and that's the difference in the game. They're gonna get this playoff. They got three seconds, and they do. And Rody gonna put it up. Throws, got a man. Open that time for a first down is Tim Gilligan, and they move the chains. Again, turn back protection. Brody comes to the, Brody comes to the corner. Good footwork, snaps, and throws throws the, the uh, stop route. All right, let's look at these scores, Barry. Miami, Miami big over Connecticut. Connecticut came back. Oh, you had to struggle, but wins over Missouri by seven on the road in Columbia. That may be the upset of the day. Cal over Washington. Sure. And here's another one. Penn State, a mild upset, except they did it in Madison. Here's a give on that reverse this time to Wingfield. And Wingfield at the 30, at the 27-yard line. Dick, you've been looking for that play all night. There it is. There it was. The Z quick. That was, that's the play that, that all, all that stuff comes off of. The one thing I'll comment on with Oklahoma and with Texas, they both struggled today, but the big Red River shootout is next week. I'm sure both of them had, had a difficult time getting themselves completely ready for this week's ball game. That's always tough, and every coach, of course, says, no, 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 we're not doing that. We're playing one at a time. Red and River rivalry is what it is. Yeah, it's great fun, too. I, I saw that last year for the first time. It is nuts. I've had a chance to go there a couple of times. Give this time to Forsey. Forsey off the right side with a gap to the 20. Still on his feet and driving to the 17-yard line. Leonard Peters runs him down. Brock Forsey running hard. 100 yards now for Forsey. Well, it's just all Boise State. Credit to Boise State. Their offensive front, they're, they're planning on offense, defense, and the kicking game. They've done a tremendous job. And they're trying to put a cap on a country here in front of a very enthusiastic crowd. Well, due credit to uh, Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator, has come up with a brilliant plan here. Dan Hawkins, as we said, I, I just really like everything he does here. That's his coach's coach. Here's Forsey, and he's stopped by the first man and still manages to get ahead and get it inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Forsey's just run so hard. And these are both quality programs, Barry, and you make the point that they treat their players right. I really believe that that's something that is, is very, very important. And here, as you see, Forsey just making such a determined run to pick up extra yardage. I mean, I really believe that the old days where, where coaches were probably uncompromising with their players, that's really changed, and the chemistry of your team is very, very, very important. We're coming back. Ball game, Boise State over Hawaii. Barry Tompkins, Dick Tomey telling you about it. 11 one remaining in the ball game. And the Broncos are driving again. They have it at the 13-yard line, second down and seven. Second and seven on 
They line Swilly up at the tight end spot this time. They usually throw out of this set. This time they don't. They give it an inside handoff to Michael. And he only gets about a yard. Houston Allah, nice play. More scores from around the country. Ohio State goes to Evanston, beats Northwestern. It was a battle, though. Arizona up early on number seven, Oregon. Tennessee struggling with Arkansas, leads by seven, final period. They're in overtime in Pullman between Washington State and USC. Biggest game in the Pac-10 Conference. LSU easy over Louisiana Lafayette. And Colorado, a big win and upset over 16th ranked K-State. Two tight ends this time. One wide out in the I formation. A pitch to force. He's going to throw it. Throws and unable to catch up to his roadie. The throw back to the quarterback. Good idea. Not quite perfect execution. Really tough play to cover because usually man-to-man defense has nobody assigned to the quarterback. And the defensive end has to peel. Let's see this. Brock Forsey throwing the ball back. He's running well. We didn't get him throwing the ball, but goodness, he's taking punishment. But he's dishing out the punishment as well to the defense. Calicay, the field goal try, and it is up and good from 35 yards. And that stretches the lead even more. It is now 48 to 17. Boise State over Hawaii. 10-10 left in the ball game. You're watching Black Football from ESPN+. Plus. Broncos put three more on the board. It's 48 to 17. Some of the fans uh, saying we have seen enough. Our team wins. I don't think that guy thinks exactly that it's uh, completely sealed and delivered quite yet. Well, you, 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 it's a long time before you make that that you have that feeling as a coach because you've seen too much football. I mean, goodness gracious! A couple of years ago, Stanford scored 21 points against Washington, almost with no time coming off the clock. They got three onside kicks in a row. That is kicked. That'll go in and out of the end zone. Take you back to some of the scores we uh, showed you a little bit earlier. Arkansas has tied Tennessee in the fourth quarter. So the mighty are starting to fall tonight. 17 all. Washington State got a field goal. Now USC has the ball. So the onus on the Cougars defense there. Yeah, the team that gets it last in an overtime has an advantage. They know what they need to get. Timmy Chang and the Warriors start at the 20-yard line. Chang straight back, throws underneath this time, and it is caught by Owens and dropped immediately, and that in microcosm is the story of the night. Yes, sure tackling, holding Hawaii to minimum gain. Chris Carr again with another with another great open field tackle. Well, he has been a big-time player. Owens is still down. Carr, we talk about making big plays. Carr, of course, had the block of the only punt of the ball game, incidentally, for Hawaii. And well, we covered the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. Dan Hawkins said yesterday that Chris Carr was, was a starter in his mind, and there's Chad Owen shaking it off and, and being helped off the field, but appears to be okay. So it'll be second down and six. Hawaii will rise again. They have a good football team. They've got a, a lot of people that I think will be very hurt by the result of this game if the result turns out to be the way it is and they will bounce back. Throw underneath, and Herbert couldn't quite hang on to it. Almost had it taken away from him that time. Michael was coming hard, and the hand on the ball, actually. Up in Pullman, Washington. It is now final, and Washington State has beaten USC in overtime 30-27. to so USC loses today, Washington loses today. UCLA and Arizona State right at the moment driving the bus in the Pac-10. And Oregon's behind, Oregon's behind Arizona. That's right. There's Owens with the catch, and I don't know if they're gonna give him quite that much. He may be a little short. Although he appears to be getting a very generous spot right at the 30 yard line, and if so, it'll be a first down. 
I'm just so impressed with Boise State's open field tackling. I think it's just been the textbook tonight. And usually Hawaii breaks tackles on some of those balls where people get the ball running and so on, and that just hasn't happened much tonight at all. No, it's been just perfect execution, as you said. Not only, not in any particular facet of the game, but in every facet of the game by Boise State. Blitz comes this time. Chang has to unload and does for Owens. Owens now doubles back. Michael fell down, came back, made the tackle, and now flag. Could be face mask. And I think this will go against Boise State. And it is a face mask. Now we'll see what kind of face mask. I think it's a, I think it's a Wilson. Let's, let's take a look here as Chad Owens comes back up the field. There's Michael getting a hold of the face mask. Just bar I don't know. Well, it looked like he might have missed it, but it, that's what they called. Hawaii just having to run too many plays or to, to make yards. There's just no chunks. No chunks out there tonight. Jim Jones can only pace the sideline and think about another day. First down, cross midfield at the 49-yard line for the Warriors. Chang unloads again. And let's see if they give that to him. They do. Nice grab by Justin Colbert. Managed to get the foot down. The crowd here in Boise doesn't quite see it that way. That's a nice job by Justin Colbert of, of dragging the toe. Timmy Chang puts the ball right on the, on the money. And let's see if Colbert gets stays in. He does. Yeah, that's, he does. That's Excellent a, job. Excellent job. Heck of a catch. Nice job of teaching by Ronnie Lee, the wide receiver coach from the University of Hawaii. That's another Oregon connection. That's batted in the air by Michael, and they're going to say incomplete pass. Boise State stays after it, but I'm quite sure that'll be an incomplete pass. The fans need to understand on all those passes that could be laterals, Barry, the officials are very, very liberal. If it's even close to a forward pass, they give you a forward pass. I mean, they, they just, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's their liberal interpretation of that rule. I think that's the right idea, too. I do, too. There's Coach Jones continuing to grind, continuing to coach, trying to help his guys get better. Uh, he will do his best job of coaching of the year this week. Most coaches do after they experience something like this. Chang on a screen this time for Colbert. And again, terrific open field tackle. That one made by Travis Berger. And this will be the kind of week where Dan Hawkins will have to do a great job because his guys will be getting patted on the back all week and told how good they are and reading about themselves. And, you know, they are going to have to come back and, and get ready to play a very hug hungry Tulsa team this next week at Tulsa. And so both coaches are going to have plenty to do because this is a long season. Well, I think the kudos that Boise State will get this week are well deserved. Oh, absolutely. The show blitz, and they come with it. The draw play to Brewster, right up the gut, 25-20 to the 15, race to the corner, and he's in. Touchdown, Warriors. Nice run by Brewster, second touchdown of the game. Now Hawaii's going to have to onside kick here. So here we are under the center. Here you go, Brewster, taking it, cutting it back, and taking it to the house. Hawaii's biggest plays have been in the run game uh, tonight, except for the post-corner route to Komeni earlier. And Hawaii's going to have to onside kick after this kick if they if they want to continue to try to compete. Michael Brewster was a walk-on at Tennessee, came to Hawaii, try for point is up and good. And that makes it a 48-24 to ball game. We'll jump off the track, 7-24 remaining to be played. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN+. Plus. Aloha, Natalie. And I don't know if she's uh, watching the game or at the beach, but uh, there you are. There's your message. 24-point lead for the home team, the Boise State Broncos. We'll see an onside kick here, I'm sure. Boise State with the hands team up there. 
Nyack comes forward. Drives it right into the midsection that time of Brock Forsey and Forsey and I, right there. He has been everywhere tonight. That's an incredible catch by Forsey. Holy mackerel. I'll tell you, but but Barry, you go back to the Stanford-Washington game a couple years ago. Stanford onside kicks with a deficit like this, with a deficit like this three times in a row and gets all three and ties the game. Washington ends up winning the game late, but it was an incredible comeback just because Stanford got the onside kicks and then made plays. See some of the scores rolling by, and it has been a day of upsets. And that will continue. College football is so competitive. Not even this, this WAC conference, very strong at the top, and uh, there's not going to be too many gimme games. Fresno State, of course, is very good. San Jose State has now won three games in a row. These two teams are both going to be in the thick of it. There's some good football teams. La Tech can win. Yeah, I think it's a very, it's a much more competitive conference than it was a year ago, and and uh, there are going to be a lot of upsets. And I think the teams that can go on the road and win are the ones that are going to prevail at the end of the year. So Boise at the 48-yard line, second down and nine. Rody give to Michael, and Michael bounces it outside at the 40, 35-30. It's a race for the 20, 15, and let's see, stepped out of bounds. I believe they're going to say he stepped out of bounds somewhere around the 13-yard line or the 12-yard line. Boy, he got that step, and he accelerated. Found something else. This is David Michael, a junior from Natomas High School in Sacramento. No relation to Quentin. Watch him run. One of the leading people in the country last year in kickoff returns. Seventh in the nation, over 28 yards. He leads the WAC conference right now in touchdowns with six. So a big gainer from Michael LaBall at the 12-yard line. Fanuki in motion. Give it to Michael again. Bounces outside. Cuts it in. Touchdown, Broncos. Touchdown. Well, that's too easy. It cannot be that easy. Well, they're making it look pretty easy. It cannot be that easy. Two big plays by Michael and he pops it into the end zone and the folks here in Boise just loving what they're seeing and with good reason. Well, this is as thorough a shellacking as the University of Hawaii has, has received in a long time and uh, I'm sure that Coach Jones and the staff will go back to get this football team back and get them positive for next week but there's going to there's gonna have to be some real uh, soul searching after this one. Kaliakai with the extra point. I just wanted to say his name right one time tonight. Another look, and just waltzes into the end zone. And what Kevin Lempel will say is you can't go in from the 11-yard line or wherever that was without being touched if you're playing, if you're giving a great effort. And Dan Hawkins still all business, but I'll tell you what, he's got to be a happy guy. I mean, he has done a brilliant job of getting this team ready to play. He didn't really think that they played all that well despite a lopsided win against Utah State last week. You mentioned earlier, he said, we got some water in our gas tank. Well, no water in the gas tank today. This was... Uh, well, this is just an all-around uh, tremendous performance. As good a performance, I think, as I've ever seen anybody give uh, at any level because of the turnovers, the kicking game, uh, the run offense, and just consistently just keeping the pressure on. And that one's kicked out of bounds. It's the second one they've kicked out of bounds, and that may be the only criticism you could give to Boise State tonight. Well, so far, I think you're right, Barry. Yeah, I mean, they've been that good. Barry, it's been fun working with you. Now, I watched you. You did a lot of our games when I was coaching, I and it was, it was fun working with you there, but, but uh, it, this, was, uh, this was really a kick. It's been a lot of fun, Dick, and I really hope we can uh, tee this up again. Do it again. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Just trying to get a job, Mick. Now we're going to get uh, 
an official's timeout here for just a moment. Timmy Chang has had a long night. He's thrown the ball over 50 times. Well, it just the big stat in passing is, is yards per attempt and yards per completion and yards per in both of those areas, University of Hawaii tonight is way down. They have they have not made made chunks with their with their throws. Chang trying to roll away from pressure and He's in big trouble. Ball's knocked out of his hands, and Chang finally knocks it out of bounds. A big loss all the way back to the 27-yard line. Again, it's Quinton Michael. Boy, he and Chris Carr have just been brilliant in the secondary for well, Boise Quentin, State. Quinton Michael's blitzed uh, quite often and done, done a lot of damage in, in the backfield for, of the University of, of Hawaii. That's the third fumble that, that Quentin Michael has forced, which is a, a big night for any defensive player. You can see why he's an all-conference safety and, and, and was a conference preseason defensive player of the year. Again, Chang in trouble, has to roll away from pressure. Now he throws and unable to reach back for the catch was Comini. And I, let's go back to the first drive, Barry. I think, I think Ron Collins, the defensive coordinator from Boise, at the end of the first drive, most of the first drive, they were playing a four-man line. He went to the three-man line for the second drive, and the ball quit moving. It just quit moving with any degree of consistency whatsoever. And I think uh, they did a nice job, and the University of Hawaii was not able to run the ball well enough to get them back into a four-man front. So it'll be third down and long. And jumping early was Kamini. So now it'll be third down and even longer. Arizona again has taken the lead on Oregon. They scored first. Oregon came back and scored. And now the Wildcats with another score. Second overtime in Tennessee. Last night, Fresno State, a winner over Colorado State, had to... Uh, withstand a charge. San Jose State's now won three in a row. What a great story for them. Rice looking for its first win and looks as though it's going to get it. New Mexico State easy in the fourth quarter over UTEP. And UNLV continues to lead by a touchdown over Nevada. Chang hit as he throws. Almost intercepted. Chris Barrios got a hand on it. And now it'll be fourth down and Hawaii will have to punt. This will only be the second punt attempt. And it gives us an opportunity finally to talk about uh, Matt, Matt, McBriar. Matt McBriar. Matt McBriar from Australia. This guy is really special. June Jones found out about him from a guy who was the punter and a great punter with the San Diego Chargers, Darren Bennett. Bennett said, I'll tell you what, you're going to Hawaii. There's a guy in Australia who's better than I am. And June Jones laughed at him. He got a hold of this guy who hits uh, not his best kick, actually. <laughs> Rather short kick that's come up and taken by Gilmore, and this is going to be all the way back to the 30-yard line. Well, here we are pumping the guy, and he's had a block punt and a line drive with a big return, but he's got a lot of leg. He's got a lot of leg. Trust me on this one. He does. He does. Another another special teams breakdown by, by the Warriors. And a 26-yard return that time. Here you see the return. You see Gilligan. There's several good hits. They do a nice job of avoiding the click. Travis Berger does a nice job of uh, clearing the way, number 13. Gilligan's got some quicks, too. He does. So once again, this is Heck, who scored a touchdown on that reverse pass that got Boise State started early in the ball game. He picks up about four. And you can see if he picked up four yards there, what that really tells you, once again, is that Boise State is getting off the ball that quick because first contact three or four yards down the field. Yes. Yes, Boise State continues to come off the football. Rody continues to, to play, and now he's replaced by, by Sanford. Big game for him. 
handled this team extremely well. Terrific job by B.J. Rohde. Now Mike Sanford in the game. Sophomore from Los Alamitos, California. Wrapped up in the backfield this time was Heck Houston Allah, who's had a nice game for Hawaii. Makes the stop for a loss. Any football team, the University of Hawaii players have tremendous pride. They've worked very hard in the offseason. They have tremendous desire to have an outstanding football team. They'll come back. They'll look at that tape tomorrow and the next day, and they'll see what they need to do to get better, and they'll redouble their efforts to get better. And I think uh, next week, come back and do a tremendous job. Rody, 18 of 28, 190 yards, two touchdowns. He did everything that Dan Hawkins could have asked of him today. Big guy in the film room. He's a fifth-year senior. Has done everything that uh, the coaches would request of a, a backup quarterback. He is a backup quarterback, and he knows it. And when did when he comes back, he will continue to be so. Well, and, and I think B.J. Rohde has understood his role very, very well. He knows Dinwiddie's a quarterback, and he'll support him when he comes back. As I said, Hawaii will go back and redouble our efforts, and they've got an outstanding Nevada team coming into Honolulu next week and certainly will have their hands full with uh, Chris Tormey's football team. High snap from center. Jones roots this one. If he's got enough, it's good, and everything's going right for Boise State, and why not this one too? 58 to 24. Nice job, nice job of, uh, of kicking the football. Goodness gracious. He's kicked with great power and great accuracy. 52 yarder earlier, Tyler Jones. And that one, of course, a 48 yarder. So 52 yarder, 48 yarder for Jones. He's their long kicking specialist. We're going to, you know, it, people say, well, what's this going to do to the University of Hawaii's psyche? And I think young people are very resilient. I think, I think these guys believe they can have a good football team. I think the coaches will pick themselves up. It's a long flight home. Everybody will have, uh, will be very introspective on the way back. And when they start practice on Monday, I think they'll really get back to, to basics and give themselves an opportunity to play well against an outstanding Nevada team, a greatly improved Nevada team. Everybody that goes to Hawaii forgets about everything else, don't they? <laughs> this is going to be West at the two-yard line. And West is cracked. Just putting an exclamation point on this whole thing. Cameron Merritt and Chauncey Ako just sandwiched him. This is a tremendous job of hitting. I think Boise State has excelled in the hitting area tonight. We have to just continue to understand that this game is about hitting and giving great effort and wanting to, and I think Boise State certainly has excelled in that area tonight. And this kickoff is a great example of that. You were talking earlier too, Dick, about uh, what a terrific home team this Boise State team has been. They've won 22 now out of 23 at home. Watch this hit. Oh, holy. Tremendous job of flying in there and making a play. Chang in trouble, comes back over the middle, and Colbert, did he get it? No. You started to say about the home streak Well, here. I was going to say they've won 22 out of 23, and the only home loss they've had in those 23 games, Barry, was last year to Washington State, an outstanding Washington State team. Washington State, a big win tonight at home in Pullman, beating USC. It's hard to win in college football. It's hard to win. There are just so many good players around the country and so many people that can get bigger and stronger and faster. Physiology of weight training and exercise and nutrition of all improved. Chang steps up, throws, pulled down nicely by Cochran. What's happened, Barry, I think in college football is it used to be that if you weren't big and strong, then you never were, but now they make people big and strong. The, all these, all these uh, nutritional aids and so on, if you aren't a big, strong athlete, you can make yourself one if you're willing to work hard, and that's just changed the whole dynamic. Yeah, and I think the 85 scholarship rule also has... Uh... Yeah, it's been wonderful because it gives people a chance, and Brock Forsey, how good is he? Who could he play for? He could play for anybody. Absolutely. Quentin Michael. Sure, as, or Vince Monawai or, or 
piece of Tino Samoa. A lot of players we see out here could play for anybody. Cameron Merritt on the stop there. Two minutes, 20 seconds remaining in this game. 58 to 24, Boise State. A convincing victory. Chang again, throws too tall. Off the hands and almost intercepted. Colbert, the intended receiver. It'll be important after this ball game, the University of Hawaii players, I think, all look at themselves and not try to look at somebody else. They need to look at themselves and understand that they were all part of this, where they played every player no plays, where they carried the ball a bunch of times or hardly any. Uh, in order for them to get better, they're all going to have to take some share of the responsibility. You know what strikes me too, Dick? I, I think this is really more about what Boise State was tonight rather than what Hawaii wasn't. Well, I think you're probably very correct about that. Chang throws, Colbert can't hang on to that one. It's just like what the Anaheim Angels were, not what the Yankees oh, weren't. Exactly. The Anaheim Angels looked like a team possessed, looked like a team was just going to succeed in, in this uh, in short series, and they certainly did. So, punting situation, and uh, once again, well, maybe they're not going to punt. Be no sense in punting right now. Boise State thought they might punt, but now they're going to get back up, play a little defense, and they try to hustle a late substitution onto the field, and I think they're going to get flagged for it. Illegal substitution. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. That was something that June Jones was very concerned about. He said uh, Boise will do that. They'll try to hustle a late substitution into the game. But in this case, it's pretty much of a moot point. Timeout on the field has been called, I believe, by Hawaii. A couple of more updates from scores around the country on a day of upsets in college football. Second quarter in Tucson, Arizona, seven up on Oregon. Arizona played well at home against Oregon. Colorado now in the third overtime. overtime. And remember, you get this far now. you got to go for a two-point conversion if you score. 23-23, Tennessee and Arkansas. Fourth down now and four for Hawaii to keep possession. Chang throws. Komine makes the catch. First down and out of bounds at the 44. Chang complete. Kamini, a guy who in a high school game playing at Marino High School, and, which you know, of course, in Honolulu against Kamehameha, had 17 catches. That's good. I don't care who you're playing. That's against. a season. Yeah, that is a season. Hawaii just hasn't caught many balls tonight going down the field. They've caught a lot of balls going to the outside to have been able to turn up and get yards. Quick toss again. This catch is made by Colbert, or rather by Owens, and Owens will get it up to the 38-yard line. Stop by Lee Marks. At that time, Chad Owens was able to make the defensive back miss and turn up the field, and, and more of that tonight would have helped. Well, maybe a case of too little, too late. Well, as you said, Barry, I think this is just testimony to the strength of Boise's program. They've been wonderful to us since we've been here and not indicative of the strength of the University of Hawaii. And uh, I think by the end of the season, we'll, that, that will bear out. No, I think that's absolutely true. I think these are two good football teams. I think in, in the case of this evening, there was one that uh, did a little whooping on sure. the other. And there was a, a late hit on that last play, so 15-yard penalty assessed against Boise State. Quick toss this time. Colbert, and he stopped immediately once again on the stop that time. Terriel Hall. Hall. 
Boise going uh, with a second line defense now. Lee Marks in there and Terry Hall at the corners. Chris Barrios, Clint Fur. I want to mention some of these guys playing right now. Cameron Barrett. Chang throws over the middle. Touchdown. Colbert, nice grab. A little post route. 24 yard pass. Nice throw and catch by Timmy Chang. Nice looking throw here. You're going to see it looking right back at it. And Colbert. Catches the ball with his hands. I might say to you young receivers out there, you'll notice Colbert caught that ball with his hands. He didn't get it with his body. You need to catch the ball with your hands whenever you have an opportunity. So with 47 seconds left, Hawaii will try for their 31st point. 27 short. It is up and good, and it is a 58 to 31 ball game. And it hasn't been that close. No, that's right. A dominant performance tonight by Boise State. And Hawaii was on the positive end of a dominant performance the last two weeks, and now they're on the short end, and the truth is somewhere in the middle uh, in both, in all cases. Well, they've been a very good home team. Long way to come, of course, from uh, Honolulu to Boise. What did you say, about six hours? Yeah, but I don't think, Barry, that really has that much to do with it. I think they played they played great football down at UTEP. They won 31-3 to or whatever it was. And just, I think, did a terrific job as a football team. And uh, went to BYU, played, played well, but not as well as they did down at UTEP. And I just think uh, the credit needs to go, as you said, many times to Boise State because... Uh, all these college athletes get used to travel. So again, I suspect we will see an onside kick here. And another drive kind of kick that is going to be let go out of bounds, wisely so by Michael. It'll come to Michael, it'll come to the 35-yard line. I want to go back to Knoxville, Tennessee, tell you what's happening in that game. Remember, they're in the third overtime, Arkansas and Tennessee. Tennessee, on its first possession of the third overtime, fumbled the football, and Arkansas recovered. So if Arkansas can manage even three, they will score a big, big upset over the 10th-ranked team in America. It is, and Tennessee will have lost a couple times, which is very unusual. As you see, there's just so much parity in college football because there's good players all over the map, and, and players have... Uh, they have, in order to be consistent, you have to master your emotions and all the ups and downs of the season. And uh, so I think we're going to see more and more of that as time goes on. Straight ahead this time is Heck. And he gets about a yard, and uh, there may be one more snap in this game. Well, except for the fact that Hawaii called a timeout. Look at, trying to find that 37-point play here. And I think we're getting a lot of young people for Boise State an opportunity to play here, which is wonderful. Uh, because their players this next week, the guys that don't play much, that are getting an opportunity to play, they'll practice better, they'll work harder. And I know Coach Hawkins is, is concerned about the whole team and wants to get as many of his young people some snaps as he can. You know, the other thing uh, worthy of mention, I think, is that starting right tackle, Rusty Colburn went down with a leg injury, has not returned. Jason Turner stepped in, and Boise State hasn't missed a beat. Uh, Jason Turner's a young player, sophomore from Bishop Amat High School in Southern California, and uh, came in and did a, gave a really good account of himself this evening. And Hawaii is going to call another timeout, so with 25 seconds left. So there'll be at least one more play. So Brock Forsey is just is less than 100 yards away from the rushing record uh, at, at Boise State. Also approaching the all-purpose yard record, and boy, cracked immediately in the backfield was Heck. On the tackle that time, Chad Kalilimuku. Chad Kalilimuku, nice hit. 
game over. Tremendous victory for Boise State. Hawaii will, will come back together and... and uh, 58 to 31, the final score. And as you said, it wasn't really that close. Convincing victory for Boise State. We'll talk to that man when we come back. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN+. Plus. Come back 58 to 31, the final score. A absolutely thorough victory for Boise State. I believe the head coach of the Boise State Broncos, Dan Hawkins, is with us right now. And uh, Hawk, you have to be very, very proud of this football team. They seem to be especially prepared in every aspect of the game. Just nothing negative about this win tonight. Yeah, it wasn't. We really pleaded with our guys to kind of even out those rough spots we've had. And I thought that was just a very efficient game on every side of the ball. Obviously, they can get their, their shots on offense. Offense, but boy offensively we were smooth special teams we were on fire that was just a great effort by our kids and I you're right our coaches did an awesome job getting them ready to go yeah you talked about getting a little water in your gas tank over the last couple of weeks no water in the tank tonight this was a jet yeah that was nitro that was nitroglycerin right there our guys were on fire that was that was a big win for us but well, Dan Dick told me I, I tell you I've never seen a solider performance uh, just congratulations to everybody as Barry said but I thought your offensive line really dominated the Hawaii defensive front that has really played well so far, and I thought the ability to run the ball inside was a big key for you. Yeah, they really got their horns out, and we pleaded with them to be able to control the ball a little bit that way, and, and we like to be able to get that ground game going, and then I thought they gave B.J. enough time to make some throws too, so they, they did a great job. And I thought B.J. Rohde did exactly what you would have expected of him. He, he didn't try to do too much. He just ran the system, and boy, that's got to be a great feeling for Very you. Very efficient. He, and he you know, that kid deserves a lot of credit. For all the guys that are hanging back on the bench and waiting for their opportunity, he's a great example because all he does is get ready to start, and when he gets his call, the guy steps up and makes it big time. It was a game of big plays, and your team made every one of them in every area. Yeah, thank you very much. It, it was a huge win for Boise State. Great to have ESPN here on the blue, and uh, hopefully we can keep her going. All right, Hawk, thanks very much. Great job by you and your coaching staff. You deserve a lot of the credit also. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Hawk. Dan Hawkins, the head coach here, and uh, got to be a very happy guy. His team wins in convincing fashion, an old-fashioned whooping. 58 to 31, the final score here, and uh, what a terrific win for Boise State as uh, they came in here and really dominated virtually from the get-go. Well, they they did, Barry, and it just it just. Uh it's testimony to a great coaching job, and I think that uh, the whole, all the Boise State community can be real happy tonight. All right, we'll come back. We'll wrap things up. 58-31, to 31, the final score of this ball game, and uh, a decision that really was never in doubt. You're watching WAC Football from ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back. This one's in the books. 58-31, to 31, the final score. Boy, Dick, you start looking for heroes, and you can point your finger at almost anyone in any portion of this game for Boise State. Well, you can, Barry, and I, I let me go back to what I said about the University of Hawaii. I think Coach Jones will do one of his – this will be one of his toughest weeks as a coach, but I think that he and his staff will rally his team and do a great job of bringing his team back and make them competitive again next week. And But all credit has to go to Boise State. Well, I think it was a really convincing win for them. They win it 58 to 31. Thanks for joining us for WAC Football from ESPN Plus. 58 to 31, Boise State over Hawaii. It is a wrap for us from here in Boise. For Dick Tomey, I'm Barry Tompkins. The preceding has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports.